next couple of days are you know just about increasing the momentum in terms of what's happening as a part of startup september broadly today is all about the finland ecosystem and the indian ecosystem coming together we've we've got about four different tracks planned out as a part of the india finland startup hub day we start with the uh, a fireside chat with uh, you know b- the business finland and the invest india leaders on the first track then we move on to a track where we go a bit deeper to understand about starting up in finland from there we move to meeting a few top ecosystem enablers from both sides who have been building communities in india and in finland and post that is going to be a couple of quick introductions to you uh, we're going to have a fireside chat with some leaders who have been driving academic research uh, and you know taking it from research to monetization or business funding and post that there's going to be a quick glimpse into something very exclusive that we're launching today uh, you know an exclusive community that is being launched with founders incubators and accelerators from both sides to network and interact on a daily basis with a lot more context uh, which is something that all of us are are waiting forward uh, so what i'll do is while the most important piece which is also the launch of the uh, community will be the last item on the agenda i would like to invite amit singh co-founder of headstart to come over and and take it forward from here for the first fireside chat thank you so much gautam and i welcome uh, one and all from finland as well as india for joining us today this evening this afternoon thank you very much guys um for the inaugural panel we have uh, two extraordinary people uh lars uh, hagebris director of international operations investment finland and business finland as well as shivangi jain avp startup india government of india and we're going to have uh, a series of conversations around uh, uh what the finnish ecosystem is like what the indian ecosystem is like and what the, what are the opportunities available for entrepreneurs on both sides of the spectrum in the uh, other ecosystem Uh, before uh, we get Lars and uh, Shivangi on board, for those of you who do not know much about, uh, uh, you know, the corresponding uh, alternative uh, uh, ecosystems on the Finnish side and the Indian side, there's a small little intro that we've prepared for you that I'll quickly walk you through, and we'll dive straight into questioning uh, questions with Lars and Shivangi. So, uh, could I just get your screen access, please? All right. So this is uh, there's something interesting that Head Start has been working with along with Business Finland as well as uh, uh, Invest India, uh, Startup India, and which is the in- India Finland Startup Hub. You're gonna know a lot about this in the time to come. Now coming to Finland, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody's in India has heard of uh, Finland and Finnish people, and probably the first thing that comes to mind. when we talk finland is nokia all of us at some point in time probably have played with nokia phone in our hands uh, another thing that might come to our mind is that yeah it's the happiest country in the world so finland's full of happy people or angry birds not sure if all of you know that but finland has a phenomenal um, gaming community and startups building uh, industry leading top charting games angry birds clash of clans and the like uh it's a very beautiful country i've been there personally uh, i've seen members of parliament cycle their way to work which is pretty extraordinary uh it's also the land of saunas i think every household might have a sauna over there it's also the home of slush uh, one of the world's largest entrepreneurial conferences and uh, uh definitely a destination for uh, all of india's top startups that are looking at entry into europe and otherwise a greater um, you know european us investment connect uh finland is also well known for ex- the excellent uh, industry st- academia startup collaboration that exists over there and the university of helsinki is at the, is at the heart of it linux the operating system uh, was uh, germinated over here and there's some fantastic research that uh, happens in the big universities over here um finland is home to about 4000 startups more than that and multiple accelerators and incubators uh and all of this is in a country of just uh, about 6 million people so uh you know very small population extraordinary impact you know per capita and that's finland for you guys in a nutshell 
coming over to India, probably the first thing that comes in the minds of Finnish people when anybody is talking India is the Taj Mahal. And uh, you know, it's a very beautiful monument uh, known world over for its beauty or India's cultural diversity. You know, there's several uh, different regions, dialects, people of various backgrounds that are present here in the uh, country making it incredibly rich in culture. Um, India has also a fantastic reputation of having world-class tech techies, uh, something which we have in our conversations with business Finland heard multiple times, uh, the respect that exists for Indian techies. Um, or maybe, you know, India's defining uh, startup of the yesteryears, Infosys, which is now one of the world's leading IT services companies, also giving boom to the, uh, uh, giving rise to the Indian IT boom. Uh, very populous country, when MPs typically go to work, there's a kilometer long queue that ends up uh, getting created. Um, India is also a land of mystics. Some, uh, those who are spiritually inclined definitely uh, come out to India to seek uh, uh, answers to a lot of likes, you know, pressing questions. Uh, and India is home to several, several R&D centers. So, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, Top Fortune 100 companies around the world have built their R&D centers, uh, leveraging Indian tech talent uh, within the country. And you'll probably get to learn a little about that in, uh, in the subsequent talks as well. Uh, it's been raining unicorns in India. Uh, like we've had a streak in April where you know about 20 unicorns got created there, there itself, or the deals got announced. And uh, over 50 case startups in the country today. Uh, 250 incubators, but uh, Invest India's uh, research actually has a much larger number, about 700 plus, and the list goes on. So incredible opportunities, uh, both, uh, you know, for Indian entrepreneurs in Finland and for Finnish entrepreneurs in India. And without further ado, I would uh, like to call upon uh, Lar Lars Hagibris to uh, talk about the Finnish ecosystem in greater detail. Over to you, Lars. Thank you very much, um, Amit. I hope you can hear me well. You're very audible, yes. Okay, excellent. So uh, thank you for this opportunity to give a little bit, um, what you say, in introduction to this. I'm Lars Hagerbries and I'm heading the international operations here in Business Finland and been working with Business Finland for the past five, six years. Uh, before that, I have a history in both Ericsson and, and um, France Telecom and a couple of startups. So um, I was thinking a bit when I got this opportunity, where should I start? I mean, because one thing that maybe people have seen is that Finland is in many rankings rated as one of the most innovative countries in the world. In Europe, recently, European community uh, listed Finland as the top two uh, countries for uh, when it comes to in innovation. And what I was thinking then, how come Finland is so uh, innovative. Well, some part of it and some answers you can probably find in the uh, problems, problem solving culture that exists in Finland. If there's a problem, we dig into it and we make it and we try to solve it. Uh, a pretty high uh, edu education level and uh, Finnish people are to a great extent early adopters of new technologies. But if you look upon the uh, Finnish startup movement, it's a pretty young uh, movement. I mean, I think there has been a systematic approach since the financial crisis 2009, where this started and we started to work with the incubators, accelerators, invested more in, in education and funding. Uh, you talked about Nokia, then then became the uh, Microsoft Mobile. I mean, they had nearly thousands companies around them supporting their development. So the entrepreneurship and startup culture has always been there. Uh, we talked about the collaboration with the university, startups, big companies and research institutes like VTT. But one thing we should not forget when, it, when we talk about the entrepreneurship in Finland is of course that there is a positive trend I mean, media is writing pretty, um, what you say, uh, good about venture capital, good about um, uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, recently when we asked students in Finland, one third of the students could consider themselves 
as an entrepreneur in the future. And also important is, of course, uh, my final remark here before I hand it back to you, Amit, is that we also track, I mean, venture capital and startup is, is very uh, tight, you can say, uh, because every startup needs growth cap, uh, capital. And, and when we look upon uh, venture capital uh, as a percentage of the GDP in Europe, uh, Finland is the country that has attracted most venture capital in Europe of all the countries in relation to GDP. I think last year it was something around 1 billion euro uh, and 50-60% 50, came from investors abroad. So investors are looking at Finland to see these kind of deep tech companies. So, so this is a little bit my short introduction to the, um, to the uh, Finnish startup ecosystem and culture. Thank you, Lars, and uh, we'll be coming back to you with some more questions in a bit. And uh, let me now welcome Shivangi from uh, Shivangi, could you throw some lights upon the uh, Indian startup and innovation ecosystem, please? Absolutely. Um, firstly, thank you so much for having me here, um, Amit. It's an absolute pleasure and also big congratulations to the entire Head Start team for achieving this milestone. Um, so very ecstatic to be here, and especially, um, you know, with Lars. Um, I think my background has been where I have been kind of a semi-entrepreneur myself because I, I joined um, Oyo Rooms when it was actually just in three cities and, um, you know, kind of was a part of the growth story when they actually expanded to over nine countries. So I think having experienced that, I was more inclined towards, you know, making, making a difference at a larger level. And I think that's where I happened to join um, Invest India, the Startup India Initiative to kind of contribute more deeply. And right now I'm, I'm leading the corporate and global partnerships team here, along with, um, you know, the academia initiatives as well. And um, I think talking about the Indian startup ecosystem, um, it's, it's a, India is a huge market. Um, it's, 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 a, it's an opportunity market of 1.3 billion people, right? And I think the first reaction that generally um, when, when startups or anybody who's not from India looks at the Indian market, they, of course, in many cases feel very overwhelmed that, hey, how do I navigate the market and how do I um, you know, identify the opportunities, et cetera. But I think the beauty of having this large market is that this is a market of opportunities and um, starting from FinTech to finance, um, um, to health tech, or maybe even to beauty and fashion, right? I think you will get all kinds of opportunities here. And um, for India, I think the major growth of the startup ecosystem, while I think the movement started 10 years back, the major growth has been in the last five years, where India has now become the third largest startup ecosystem in the world with over 50,000 startups that are a part of the ecosystem now. Um, Amit, you touched upon certain numbers. Yes, we do have around more than 700 incubators and accelerators in different, reg uh, in different sectors who are working with the startups very closely, and not just the Indian startups, also with a lot of global startups as well and a few, few from fin Finland as well. You've seen um, Indian startups making global solutions, being extremely agile and catering to the needs of not just the Indian market, but to the global markets as well. And I think where last one and a half, two years have been extremely challenging for all of us here, right? I mean, for most of the world, I think the Indian startups have been very agile where they have actually made the most out of, um, most of, the, opportun most out of the opportunity. And, they have contributed significantly. And this year, uh, we've seen 28 startups um, who have turned into unicorns, while it took us around 10 years to create around 37 unicorns. So I think that's the kind of growth uh, that the Indian ecosystem has seen this year. And um, you know, also talking about the Indian market, I mean, um, as per the World Bank report, um, India is also the second fastest growing economy in the world with 8.3% GDP. Um, the average data consumption is actually the second highest in the world. It has one of the largest internet user base as, uh, base as well. Um, and also as per um, the Kushman report, India is also the second most sought manufacturing destination in the world. So I think these are just, I mean, a few of the highlights of the Indian market to just give an overview, but I think it's, it's been a very booming market and this year has been um, a year of tremendous growth where India is also now among the top 10 R&D spenders in the world. So I think that's where we stand right now and definitely do see immense opportunity for startups coming from um, you know, different markets, especially from Finland. 
Thank you so much, Yavangi. And uh, Lars, there's also an opportunity right now for you to highlight uh, a little about the trends that you are uh, foreseeing, the, some of the success stories uh, from Finland, uh, some industries that, uh, uh, you know, Finland is a good, so, uh, good place to be in, to focus on. Yeah. No, I mean, if, if we look upon Finland and India, I mean, Finland in that sense is very small and it's impressive in India when you talk about the number of uh, ac accelerators and, and uh, incubators and so on. But I think what every country in the world today see is that glo globalization has somehow fostered an, an, a global competition when it comes to talent and knowledge. That is what it's all about. And, and we also see large companies really uh, vacuum cleaning the market and see what kind of interesting tech companies, deep tech companies do exist and try to cooperate here. And, and um, uh, what I see now is that many investors, international investors, they turn to Finland to look for certain kind of tech technology, deep tech and so on. And this is a little bit I, where I also would like to, to, to welcome uh, what you say, uh, Indian startups to a little bit look into Finland as the tech hub, uh, because I think see if Finland in Europe is a little bit like a rising hub uh, for new uh, in innovations and, and uh, startup companies. And, and, and also we should not forget that uh, Finland is an excellent uh, gateway into the European market. So, so um, I hope to see that these discussions here today somehow generates more understanding and, and open up a couple of doors and create a couple of bridges. And, and we in Business Finland can support companies to come to Finland. And, and I will talk a little bit more about that in the next session, but uh, I, I will stop there for the time being. Thank you, I mean, over, over to you. I was tempted to ask you, uh, you know, about some initiatives that have been launched, but I presume that you're saving it for the next session. Um, and Shivangi, you've already touched upon, um, you know, certain uh, uh, initiatives by the Indian government, uh, you know, which, uh, uh, like in the manufacturing sector, which make India a very good destination. Uh, would you like to probably throw some more light or, uh, uh, you know, elaborate on uh, maybe just a couple of them? Absolutely. I think um, in, in the last three years, um, we have seen a lot of interest coming from the government side as well in terms of really helping the Indian startups um, in market access to different markets. And Europe has been one of um, the prime destinations that has been Indian startups' favorite market. And we've seen a lot of Indian startups grow to that market, right? Um, but I think um, the most opportunity that um, lies in India for the Finnish startups, I would specifically would like to highlight about the edtech sector and also about the health tech sector. These are the sectors where we've seen a huge amount of investment, even in this um, pandemic year. And I think a lot of startups who have been coming from different parts, I think this is the opportunity that really lies. Uh, while a lot of this has been tapped, there's still a lot of potential for the startups to really venture into the segment, especially in the Indian market. Um, and talking about certain initiatives that have been taken up by the government, um, we have international bridges that have been launched, um, you know, under the Startup India Initiative by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under the Ministry of Commerce. Um, and we've launched around 11 bridges, and most of these bridges have been with the European countries, based on the feedback that we've received from the startups. And we do have, you know, a bridge that is focused in Finland as well. But I think our major focus areas have been on supporting the entrepreneurs who are actually in the early stage and helping them with mentorship, helping them with market access. This means, I mean, right now in today's world, most of these activities are actually happening virtually, but um, we have been taking delegations um, to different markets. I think Slush has been an event where, you know, the government has been taking delegations every year. Uh, we have... Um, we have a joint um, investment fund that has been launched with a few markets, et cetera. So I think these are a few of the initiatives, but essentially all of these are with a threefold goal that has been set up. One is to mobilize global capital for investment into Indian startups. Second is to provide the global market access. And third is to create a net environment where the Indian startups, the global startups, and these global industry players, they can all work together in sync including the incubators and accelerators who are a very important part of, of this journey for all of them to collaborate 
And that's where we have Start India website also, which is a one-stop hub for all of these stakeholders. So I think that's been the vision of the government and that's something that we are actually moving and working towards. Thank you. I'm not sure where um, Hamid went, but maybe we continue this fire chat by ourselves. Ah, here's back. I am so sorry, my uh, system decided to reboot. Um, I hope I didn't leave you there hanging for too long. No, no, no. Absolutely not. I think I was, I was still talking about the opportunity and where the government is kind of focused, but Amit, of course, you know very well um, about it already. Sure, wonderful. Um, uh, you know, I, I would love, we need to start off with the next sessions where there are plenty of details that, uh, you know, have been planned. So uh, I would like to invite each of you to uh, you know, share something about inviting the other side onto your respective home grounds. So Lars, shall we start with you? Yeah, thank you. Now, as I mentioned that, that uh, co cooperation today are uh, made in slightly different in, in as maybe it were a couple of years ago, because there are, quite interesting opportunity to do uh, what you say, like this uh, co-innovation and co-creation projects together across the border. Uh, you can sit in different countries. Uh, of course, we can help with the startup companies in Finland and things like that. But but th there are great opportunities. I will mention a couple of those examples in the next session here. But, but um, I think just by having this event, and talking about that we do exist and, and that we can support companies to go international and, and for Indian companies to reach actually the European market. Uh, and, and now we have a good contact also in invest in India that I'm pretty sure that I will use for the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lars. Shivangi, anything you wanna to say to the accelerators, incubators from the Finnish side who are with us today and the entrepreneurs on the Finnish side? Absolutely. Um, Lars, that goes likewise as well. So we are definitely very, very excited for that. But of course, I mean, Head Start and Business Finland, they have been our close partners. We've been working on a year on year basis. And I think uh, the biggest opportunity is the hub that we have, right? Um, the hub that has been created in collaboration with Business Finland. And um, I mean, this is the biggest opportunity because a lot of startups, they generally are not very sure that, you know, what is the right way to navigate a market? What is the right way to expansion to that market? And that's where this hub that has been created provides that opportunity, right? So I think everybody should really make the most out of it. Um, but having said that, I think um, we are right here to support you in your journey, um, especially goes out to the incubators and accelerators because a lot of Indian startups are very interested in working with you. Um, Finland is also one of the happiest countries. It is one of the countries which, which has um, you know, a great ecosystem. It's one of the most innovative markets as well. So there are a lot of, um, learnings that each of the market can actually draw from each other and we feel that's how the collaboration is going to be but I mean we are right here I think it's Business Finland, Head Start, Invest India, Startup India we are all together and we're right here to help you in your expansion to India uh, which which is of course like a huge market and you will have opportunities in each of the sectors apart from the ones which have already been highlighted so I really feel that the entrepreneurs, the incubators, accelerators, investors they should really make the most out of this opportunity and we really hope that the um, sessions are further going to you know, instill them to you know, take that call and take that leap to expand to India. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Shirangi. And uh, for everybody who's wondering what the hub is, uh, you know, there'll be more being spoken about it and how you can plug into uh, the uh, India Finnish startup uh, hub. Um, at a very simple level, uh, you know, it is a CRM with dedicated people from Head Start side and also active contribution support from both uh, Startup India as well as Business Finland uh, to help entrepreneurs, accelerators, investors from both sides, uh, you know, to collaborate and interact with each other. Uh, with that, I would like to really thank uh, Lars and Shivangi for joining us today and call upon Matan to drive the next conversation forward. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amit. Thank and thanks a lot, Shivangi and Lars. It was amazing listening to both of you. And I think it's probably the best start we could have uh, you know, expected for today's session. So on that note, we are ready for our next session, uh, which is gonna be hosted by my dear friend from Business Finland, Puneet Thakur. Puneet, 
a very good evening to you because I I'm sure you're in Delhi today. Yeah, hi Gautam. Hope you can see me and hear me. I can see you as well. And uh, you know, I just wanted to quickly take a second. If Arzu, you can you know uh, just set the context for the next four sessions because we've got four very important sessions coming up, starting with Puneet's. <laughs> Perfect. So, you know, that, that just gave you a quick uh, introduction to what all to expect today. You've got speakers from a lot of those brands that you saw, a lot of those orgs that you saw on the screen. So uh, just a quick point here. Uh, we also have a very active LinkedIn community, which a lot of you are already a part of. You know, I will post the link on chat. For those who have not been a part of it or you're not aware of it, you should take a look, look at what the LinkedIn group is all about which is where most of the entrepreneurs from the India and Finland side uh, have been already interacting with each other. So on that note, 5.30 sharp, Puneet, it's over to you for your most anticipated track. Thanks, Gautam. And I can see that already it's a great start to the event uh, and the fireside chat, I think, has given a lot of perspective to both audience from both the side, both from Finland and in India. So uh, uh, a very warm welcome to all in this particular session for starting up in Finland. So I am Puneet Shakur. I, I am head of investing and innovation collaboration at Business Finland based out of India. Uh, I will be moderating this panel discussion on starting up in Finland. And we have uh, today with us uh, Mr. Lars Hagebries and Mr. Harjot Singh on the panel today. Uh, maybe if uh, we can have both of them on the screen. Yeah, I can see Lars uh, Harjot. Yeah, uh, that's that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. So maybe I, I'll, I'll uh, start with the introductions. Though uh, Amit has already introduced Lars, but uh, it's it's wonderful to maybe introduce him again in detail. So uh, Lars is the director of international operations at Invest in Finland, Business Finland. And Lars brings around 25 years of international uh, sales experience from both large enterprises like Ericsson and startups. And he also brings experience uh, not only from Europe and US, but also has spent a lot of time in Asia. So welcome Lars to this session. Uh, then we have Harjot Singh. He's the founder of Triloco, a Finnish startup established by an Indian entrepreneur. So Harjot has uh, previously worked as an entrepreneur uh, a banker and a financial analyst across various European countries and in India. And in addition to his role with NIBC Bank in UK and Germany, providing leveraged finance for European SMEs. He has financial uh, forecasting and project analysis experience with Procter and Gamble in Belgium as well. So welcome Harjot. So uh, let me start this session by first introducing Business Finland, though many of you would be aware about Business Finland, but maybe a few people who might be uh, coming for the first time to our events. I'll share something about Business Finland and uh, also share a small glimpse on the Finnish startup ecosystem and post that we will hear from our panelists about their experience related to uh, starting up in Finland. So I'll just uh, share my screen. It's a small presentation that I would like to share. So let, let me share with you first uh, a glimpse on the startup ecosystem in Finland. So uh, so first of all about Business Finland. So Business Finland is a Finnish government trade and investment promotion organization. Our mandate is to catalyze new uh, sustainable growth for Finland through innovation and international collaboration. And to achieve this, uh, what we do is that we promote and facilitate uh, and fund innovation in Finland 
uh, it also helps in uh, Finnish companies to grow and grow international. And we also work to make Finland an attractive destination for international travel investments and talents. But uh, what is unique to us, what makes us unique is that we uh, know the ecosystem because we drive and fund R&D and innovation and our services are free of cost for the uh, ecosystem players in Finland. Uh, coming on to what, so what makes the Finnish uh, startup scene special? So one of the special things about uh, startups in Finland is that they don't consider themselves as competing against each other. So so I was talking about, so what uh, makes uh, the Finnish uh, ecosystem special? So, so one of the special things, uh, maybe I'll reiterate that uh, about the Finnish ecosystem is that the startups, they generally don't consider themselves as, uh, as a competitor to each other. And people uh, creating startups are all friends and they support and help each other in, grow, in their growth. Also, public uh, organizations like Business Finland are supporting the culture and sharing the risk with the entrepreneurs. Education in Finland is free, and that means that there are very many well-educated people that these startups can hire. As, as well as you know that education encourages thinking, problem-solving, and co co collaboration skills. And perhaps the most important thing uh, of our uh, startup ecosystem is that failure is totally okay in Finland. And if, uh, if you start a company and it fails, our welfare system will protect you and help you come back and you can always try again. So there are so many, uh, there are many support mechanisms that are put in place by the government and the startup ecosystem in Finland. Uh, now, this slides give you a brief glimpse of our startup ecosystem uh, that apart from startups include academic institutions like Alto University, then we have government stakeholders like Business Finland and our regional development agencies like Business Tampere, Helsinki Business Hub, accelerators like Kios, Red Brick, Maria01, and obviously above all Slush, which was all already mentioned by Amit while he was talking about Finland. Uh, and uh, let me touch briefly upon uh, the startup permit. So startup permit uh, provides an opportunity for the startup uh, uh, teams from outside of European Union to come to Finland and uh, establish their startups. Our expectations generally from these startups <laughs> is that, uh, that the startup Hello. should be uh, headquartered in Finland and all IPR should be registered with the uh, Finnish entities. And, and the startup should be solving some unique problem and have some resources of their own and above all, a passion for growth. So now moving on, uh, what Business Finland provides to startups. So we at Business Finland uh, also have some funding services for young growth companies, which includes Tempo funding that can be used to enter international markets. Then uh, uh, we have a research and development funding instruments also, and young innovative company funding to grow business at international scale. Now, as last talked about uh, in, in the earlier session also, uh, maybe I'll mention that Finland has, has been the number one destination for foreign direct investment projects in the Nordic region, but equally important, we are also number one in terms of uh, per capita funding raised on the startup side. So last year, uh, Finnish startups raised uh, almost twice that of the previous year. And uh, as Lars emphasized during his uh, uh, talk in the last session, uh, more than 50% of this was coming from foreign, foreign investments. So uh, actually, I wanted to show a video on kickstarting your business in Finland, but because of paucity of time, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, I'll request uh, the moderators to maybe copy and paste the link of this YouTube video in the chat where you can find it and uh, and 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 maybe later on you can watch this video that how you can kickstart your business in finland and 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 with this uh, i would like to close my pr presentation and i would uh, now uh, start or get going with the panel uh,
thanks for hearing me my uh, monologue for a longer period of time so let me now start uh, uh, with the panel discussion and so let, let me start first with uh, lars so lars uh, invest in finland has helped many companies in finland including coming to finland like fortune 500s and even startups to enter finland so can you share that <laughs> how <laughs> the can you share uh, can i request the moderator to, uh, the mute, to mute some mute people here. Mm. yes <laughs> so last uh, can you share that how invest in finland uh, go about helping companies uh, and if you can share some example uh, with the audience that the companies that have come to finland and how invest in finland has helped them yeah absolutely thank you for that no <clears throat> uh, as you know that we we are a state owned function meaning that the services that we provide are free of charge to people who who has ambition to do business in finland and invest in finland and um to put it a little bit in in the perspective i mean we try to focus on the things that is important for company when they're moving into a new country uh, for instance like uh, there's a lot of information you want to receive data collection you might want to elaborate whether this op- opportunity will really work in the finnish environment uh, there might be different ways to enter the market so we discuss different kind of market entry alternatives Uh, one of the most uh, important thing is to get networked you know get into the different communities r&d uh, startup hubs uh, clusters and so on uh, location management if you're starting some own, uh, facility and so on and also the you know the practical things like uh, how to set up a company and things like that for company reg- registration um also you touched upon the startup permit because talent is something that is important and and we always welcome new talent to finland and um, the startup permit is as we mentioned is to make it possible for international and entrepreneurs you know to um, to to build a company in in uh, finland and get connected into the ecosystem so that is one way of doing it and 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 when they are in finland we try them to help them connect it in the different ecosystem explain what kind of potential funding that could be raised and so on uh, there are many examples to talk about but i would like to mention at least one example and that is a german uh, family office who are it's it's a public case so i can talk about it in in in, in public and that is uh, schaffler they are within uh, iot and they have looked into finland for quite some time and now we help them to start up what they call a co-creation center in finland a co- co-creation center in finland is i mean you, you can always talk about setting up your own subsidiary and so on but the co-creation center that they have done it's a network of companies so they have a network of companies creating solutions for their clients and according to the head of that business in finland he said that that way of working uh, actually made that they reduced time to market for new services uh, they reduced the cost for producing these services so 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 we need to be a little bit adherent to new ideas of cooperation you don't need to own everything have your own business it's about cooperation and that is what is so simple in finland and i really looking forward to hear a little bit about uh, what harry has to say about that um yeah i will yeah. stop there for now yeah thank thanks lars so, so maybe a follow up to th- this question is that are there other avenues of assistance apart from business finland for international companies or uh, the startups that are coming to finland yeah well uh, uh business finland is a national body so we try to see the big picture of the nation but the, each municipality have their own regional development agency and they are very locally uh, connected like in Oulu you have business Oulu Tampere business Tampere and Helsinki and just I mean every city has it so so that is a little bit where you help to get connected locally as well uh, and that comes in when it comes to recruiting and things like that Uh, and then we should not forget um, at least uh, what will you will hear more about this afternoon uh, some
some of the uh, startup accelerators uh, like QS and Redbrick Ac Accelerator. Uh, it would be very interesting to hear what they have to say also how they can facilitate this. So um, just to give some ideas. Oh, Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So maybe now moving on to Harjot. Uh, Harjot, so you are a founder of a promising startup that is looking to leverage uh, Finnish uh, innovation and startup ecosystem. So it will be un interesting to understand from you why Finland for your startup, that's the first thing. And was it by chance or did you already know about uh, the Finnish uh, leadership on the innovation front? And, and if you already knew it, then how did you come to know about Finland? So over to you. <clears throat> Cool. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can, we can hear you. Super. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think it's a great question. Um, I came to learn about Finnish innovation uh, entirely by chance, uh, by a, an incident that was actually both uh, quite funny and quite humbling. So about 10 years ago, I was working uh, in London after having worked in uh, Germany and in Belgium. And I was invited for some reason to a a pitching event where several Finnish startups, uh, specifically from uh, Ulo, were present. And I basically went there on a lark. I had no idea what to expect. I truly knew nothing about Finland. So I walked in there thinking, haha, you know, let me just sit there and, and enjoy this. And the joke, as it turned out, was on me um, because the quality of the startups and the quality of the technology was uh, mind blowing. You know, we're talking 10, 11 years ago. Uh, computing on the edge, uh, intelligent mesh networks, uh, really implementable smart grids that could go on. And so about uh, half an hour into uh, the, the event, I was busy Googling Ulu because I knew nothing about it. Um, and uh, I was incredibly impressed by what I encountered. Um, guys, can you hear me or is it? Uh... Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Someone on the chat said the voice wasn't audible. So. But yeah, uh, so the short of it was that uh, 10 years ago, I learned about Finnish innovation. Uh, one of the entrepreneurs at that event uh, turned out to be a key strategic advisor for my venture. And 10 years later, I incorporated in Ulu. So there we are. Yeah, great to hear that. And I think many of uh, our audience, people in audience would not be knowing about Olu. So Olu is a small city up uh, north, closer to Arctic Circle in Finland. And it's like... Uh, known as a silicon valley for wireless connectivity because a lot of r d on uh, wireless uh, networking is done over there uh, but uh, harjot maybe continuing with you uh, can you share your experience uh, of establishing your startup in finland so how did it go what were the key yeah. enablers for you were there any challenges that you faced uh, because we have a lot of people here in the audience maybe who would like to uh, hear more about uh, the experience of setting up or going to Finland. Yep. Um, and keep in mind, Puneet, I set up in Finland during the COVID times, which must be uh, one of the more challenging you know, times to, to set up a venture in, in another country. Uh, look, I think the process was very well enabled. Uh, I was very lucky. I was very fortunate as strategic advisors who um, you know, were very, very important. Um, the ecosystem players like Business Ulu and Business Finland were really relevant, introduced me to experts who provided thought leadership, pointed me in the right direction, created credibility for my business. And uh, consequently, I was able to kind of put together a network of uh, service providers um, and partners who, who made the entire incorporation process uh, really almost seamless. The only challenge was it took a little while to to get my, you know, our bank account started, but truthfully, I think, you know, that would have been the case anywhere because I just couldn't travel there, and so it just took a little more time on the KYC front. But uh, far more seamless than I would have thought it would have been. Let me put it that way. Great, great, great to hear that, Harjot. Uh, I think this will provide a lot of perspective to people in audience uh, that how they can go about if they are looking at Finland as a destination. Uh, so maybe now coming to you, Lars. So this, I think this was a question which was also asked by Amit. I have a similar question to you. So what, what kind of startups should look at Finland as a destination? So is it suited for uh, uh, all kind of startups or are there specific sectors that are more prominent? Uh, so what, what's your take on that? Yeah, on this, you can actually take two approaches. Um, 
is as you know that Finland is is quite well known for uh, for the strength when it comes to dig digitalization and ICT. I mean the the birth of the uh, 3G, 5G, and 6G is on the move. You know, so so there are a lot of competence and skills and and people who want to be part of that train when it's moving. It's a good place to be for sure. Um, sustainability in all domains is something that is extremely important. We have it as a goal now, and we we really are looking for companies that can do new development to you know uh, make the world greener in that sense. Um, but then if you twist that coin around and say, yeah, we are pretty strong on, on uh, ICT and digitalization, but that also means that there are quite interesting opportunities when it comes to uh, bio, circular economy, uh, clean tech, uh, different kind of health tech solutions, because uh, health is something that needs to be, you know, uh, revolutionized in a way and, and, and more home care and things like that, because people are aging. So, so th there are a lot of interesting uh, companies and opportunity in that domain as well. Uh, so um, I think that, that, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to say that anything is better than anything else, but but dig is something that was probably our, our stronghold, uh, and, and that also opened up for other areas to be. Uh, yes, great. That, that, that's yeah, good good uh, information, uh, Lars, and 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 from my experience also working for Finland for last. Uh, now a couple of years, I think ICT DG is the key sector from Finland, and we have seen that um, mainly uh, a lot of deep tech startups are flourishing in Finland, and generally they have a strong academic uh, partnership with them. So Harjot, I understand that you are also looking to forge some academic partnerships in Finland. So can you maybe shed some light on that, and also why why is that important to you? Yeah, um, I think it's a great question, Puneet. Look, uh, it's one of the key reasons we came to Finland uh, was because of the quality of innovation capital uh, that we had access to. And obviously being you know, a no-code industry 4.0 startup that is really focused on the carbon question and the circularity question, it made a lot of sense to kind of move into the, the Finnish academic networks and, uh, and optimize the access to, uh, to knowledge and capability. And so what we did, Puneet, was we spoke to the University of Ulu's uh, 6G flagship. Uh, so everyone, you know, in India was known 4 and 5G, and, and this is the 6G flagship. The, the, you know, they work on very advanced topics, and uh, we are moving towards an agreement with them on, uh, you know, certain advanced topics in the you know, areas of machine vision or distributed architectures. And I want to make, you know, a, a point about two facets that, that really impressed me. The first was uh, folks were very positive uh, to engage. There was a lot of positivity. People were very, very approachable uh, at the at the academic institution. And the second was the level of expertise. So you know, folks were very knowledgeable. The quality of R and D is is absolutely top. And uh, and to that effect, yes, we have practically uh, moved into that space. So we are going to close at least one agreement and and hopefully more. So uh, you know, we are we are active in that space. Yes. No, no, that, that's wonderful to know that you are going ahead uh, with your uh, academic partnerships as well with the Olu University. And it's worth, worth mentioning over here that Finland was the first country to take on 6G. And we have a flagship, uh, 6G flagship at Olu University, where it, wherein a lot of research and development is taking place. Uh, so, uh, Lars, uh, we are talking about uh, this academic institution. So, what's your view on uh, companies partnering with academic institutions? And uh, do you believe that uh, international companies coming outside uh, of Finland have they found that useful and interesting? So, what's your experience on that? Have you experienced something over there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you first look upon the academia and, and the research institute that we have not mentioned here today, which is called VTT in Finland, um, they are a, a very good and have long experience in creating new initiatives. Uh, many of these initiatives have then been handled as, the, as, as a spin-off, you know, out of the academia into the real world, if I say so, uh, and created new startup companies. Uh, so experience is quite big in that domain. And many of these um, 
uh, uh, universities and so on are working closely with the startup communities and also the big companies with different programs uh, to share experience and, and, and mainly R&D related. And, and that is something that they embrace every year who wants to have something to offer and, and take part of that one. Um, just to mention one example there, I mean, now we talked about um, uh, Ulu uh, when it comes to com communication and industrial IoT and things like that. But also down in, in Tampere, for instance, we have the um, Im imaging uh, ecosystem, which is, is highly unique. Everything that comes to uh, this visualization, soft lenses, cameras, and imaging, uh, they have a big, great cluster there. And ha they have different programs where companies join in to share experience and also do R&D together. So um, I, I think this way of working, I mean, Finland is a small country, as you understood, and it's very family uh, way of working uh, between the companies and the university. And, and that is what we think is an advantage. Great, Lars. So I think we are uh, running out of time now, but I think we have just enough time to one final comments from both the panelists. So maybe, uh, maybe Harjot, I can start with you first. Uh, final comments from you. Yeah, I think two facets for prospective partners and entrepreneurs going to Finland that I'd love to just restate. Um, the first is Finland is very advanced, you know, when it comes to innovation capital. When you think of innovation capital as a composite of human talent, uh, investment, R&D. Uh, and the second facet is that Finland has really focused on and mastered the art of the ecosystem. Uh, the way it comes together then is very, very beneficial. And it reflects not just in corporate, but in society where uh, people are willing to work together, learn together, think about the future, invest in it, and then execute it. And the outcome is, uh, as was stated at the start of this, uh, you know, a happy country uh, with a very, very uh, high quality of living. So there you are. Thanks, Ajot. Last final words from you. Yeah, I, I will get to just give an example. I, I brought a big um, American Canadian company to Finland and we made a visit and we met up with uh, 10 different uh, tech companies, startup companies. And um, then uh, when we have met the last one, the uh, second last one, there was uh, the last person we should meet and we couldn't find him. And uh, they were a little bit competing companies in a way. But when we asked the other one, do you know where this company is? And their competitors said, oh, yeah, he's here. I can give him a call so he will come and show you. So how this works is very working in a very family way and, and people tend to work in these clusters, even if they are competing, they try to benefit from each other, which I think is unique. And we have proven that, what is it, 97% um, uh, of all the innovations that comes out to the market are created in ecosystem. So these kind of, of communities are extremely important. Thank you. Great example, Lars. I think uh, nothing could have been better than that. To uh, before finishing uh, this particular session. Uh, so maybe I, I believe the audience would have got a lot of insights uh, of how they can go about starting up in Finland, uh, about the business culture that's there and what's unique about Finland, how they can approach the uh, research and development and how they can go about setting up and who are the key stakeholders they can engage with. Uh, a lot of insights and I believe uh, a lot of learning for our audience and uh, and with this uh, I think I would like to end our session on starting up in Finland. A very big thanks to Lars and Harjot for sharing wonderful insights and that I believe would be quite useful for our audience and also a very warm, welcome, warm thanks to our audience for joining in. Uh, thank you. So I'll just uh, hand it back to Gotham for taking it forward. Thanks mm -hmm. everyone. All right. In fact, uh, Puneet, I will come in here. So good to see you back. And uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Anurag here. I'm uh, part of the uh, Head Start set up in Helsinki, uh, leading our Helsinki chapter. And uh, great to be with all of you. I'm based in Helsinki. Uh, so I have the privilege of uh, being at the liaison point uh, for uh, the India Finland Starter Hub. So this was a really great conversation. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Lars, uh, for, for the details that you provided and, uh, you know, uh, 
this was really good to to hear hear from uh, the panelists here as well. Um, now, when we're talking about uh, uh, the startup ecosystem, right? Uh, one of the most important things is uh, accelerators, right? They they, they form the the cradle uh, of uh, the startups. They give the initial boost to uh, to you when you are starting up, and uh, taking into consideration this important of these accelerators. For the next part of our conversation, we have an excellent uh, uh, setup. We are talking about the there's going a panel discussion about the ecosystems uh, in India and Finland. We have a great panel. panel. Uh, we have um, leading accelerators from both India and Finland. We have QAS, Red Brick Accelerator from Finland, and then GeoGen Next, as well as Manipal University Incubator uh, from India. So I would like to invite uh, Gautam back uh, to welcome our speakers, introduce this panel, and uh, take us to this very interesting discussion. Gautam, over to you. Thank you so much, Anurag. It's always a pleasure interacting with you. And, and of course, thanks for setting up and building Head Start's presence in Finland, which has probably resulted in this entire bridge. So a very good evening once again to all of you here. And uh, you know, next track is something that's uh, very close to my heart, talking about communities, ecosystem, and enablers. So uh, I have four amazing panelists, four people who put who've been putting community and ecosystem ahead of themselves from my interactions over the last few years. So I would love to invite uh, Patrick, Patrick Holopanen from Kios. Patrick, can you say hi to all of us? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm wonderful, Patrick. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful to have you here with us again, Patrick. Happy to be here. Uh, and I'm assuming you're an SPU today. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? No, I'm, I'm assuming you're an SPU as we speak. I'm in a spoo. What's that? Wonderful. It's and... Espo. <laughs> Espo. No, I'm actually in Helsinki. Uh, we're doing like partially remote, partially like uh, <clears throat> on site. I was yesterday at Espo. Yeah, at the start of sauna. Wonderful. Uh, a very good evening to you as well, Mirza. Mirza Sagbapi from Red Brick Accelerator, the man behind Red Brick and putting Tampare on the map. Hey, thanks, thanks everyone for organizing and inviting me over. Uh, very, very happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us, Mirza. A very good evening to you, Ame, Ame Masherkar, who heads the GeoGen Next uh, Fund and Accelerator as a part of the Reliance Group. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, hi, Gautam. It's always a great pleasure to be with you and a big hi to Patrick and Mirza as well. Absolutely, Ame. And Ame, I'm assuming you're based out of Pune today as we speak. Or are you based, are you back in Mumbai? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, no, no, I'm, I'm uh, connecting from Pune actually. Wonderful. So I've been here for a while now. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. And, and, since, and the fourth uh, panelist month. for the day is Divya Pratwani. Divya, thank you so much for joining us today. Divya heads the uh, incubator at uh, the Manipal Group. Thank you so much. Manipal Group happens to be one of the largest healthcare and education group in India. Thank you so much for joining us, Divya. Thanks a lot, Gautam. And uh, hello, uh, hello, Patrick. Hello, Ame. Hello, Mirza. Glad connecting with you here. Perfect. So, no and uh, Divya, I'm assuming you're in Jaipur as we speak. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so yeah, so I, I, I really love traveling and I'm sure that came out with me asking and pointing out which city each one each one is based out of. Of course, for uh, everyone, I'm based out of Bangalore, down south in India, uh, where most of the startups have been emerging out of here. So a very good evening to all of you. And uh, you know, we would want to straight away jump into this track. The idea is to really get into the heads of the people who are enabling the ecosystem, people who've been seeding ideas, hand-holding them to to become bigger startups. Uh, you know, in, in my view, a lot of times, I see a lot of fellow enablers on this call as well, a lot of accelerator CEOs and incubator CEOs. So something that I always say is, you know, as ecosystem enablers, a lot of us, uh, a lot of you people on the call happen to be the unsung heroes of the startup ecosystem, because, you know, at the same time you work with 10, 15 startups, each cohort, 
uh, putting in a lot of effort in scaling them, finding the right doors to open for them. Uh, you know, at the same time, not really taking the limelight uh, while simply, you know, silently enabling and moving on with the next set of 10, 15 startups that you would love to enable, right? And, and that's where I would love to acknowledge not just the four of you gentlemen on the screen, but, you know, the hundreds of enablers out there who put community first, who put, you know, supporting startups first over, you know, the time that you get for uh, the rest of it. So on that note, uh, Amay, I would love to start with you, you know, and, and, you know, if you can quickly start with a simple introduction, because uh, it will be important for everyone to know, uh, you know, the organization that you're a part of and why GeoGen Next as a program evolved and where is it today? How important is it as a part of the larger group's uh, focus? So a small introduction uh, will help and then we will take it forward from there. Uh, um, sure. Yeah, so, uh, so thanks, Gautam. Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? I can hear you, Amay. Yes. Okay, great. Great. Um, so, you know, thanks for that uh, introduction, Gautam. And, uh, you know, just to introduce GeoGen Next. So we are a startup focused uh, program uh, in the Reliance ecosystem. Uh, uh, Reliance is uh, India's largest uh, company. And, uh, you know, we are basically uh, a startup program that uh, uh, looks at uh, customer access, market access, investor access, uh, but all within the Reliance ecosystem. Um, so we look for startups that are essentially uh, closely fitting with our uh, goals and objectives, and then we engage with them, uh, you know, either as as customers or then as investors. Uh, and then we look at how we can scale up uh, these startups from there. So we've been running this program for the last uh, seven years. Um, our startups have collectively raised about uh, $310 million so far. Uh, about 160 startups uh, and uh, about 18 uh, of them uh, have been acquired not by Reliance but by the industry and uh, we have uh, you know facilitated three strategic investments by Reliance in, in, in companies that have come out of uh, GeoGen Next. Uh, so that's the that's the story so far and uh, we do essentially two cohorts a year of 10-11 startups each um, starting this year, we've made it a continuous program, so there is no cohort, but essentially, uh, you know, to, to cater to the demand that we have, uh, you know, startups can apply and, uh, you know, we, we quickly connect them to relevant stakeholders within our ecosystem, and then uh, we take the next step in terms of doing a pilot and so on and so forth. Uh, so so that's, a, that's a quick intro I got up for you. Thank you so much, Amey. Patrick, I would love to, uh, you know, go with you next. If you can, you know, have a quick introduction of Chaos and yourself for the benefit of the Indian ecosystem. And, uh, you know, maybe before Patrick starts, I, I was very happy to hear that one of the startups from our network in India happened to be a part of your last cohort and also came in the top three. So that's that's a great uh, story to hear about the India Fund and, you know, Startup Bridge. Yes, Patrick, over to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we, we uh, <clears throat> well, we're a startup accelerator and we do batches where we help startups and we just had our previous batch this summer of 25 teams and there one of them actually was part of the uh, part of your network from India and how they applied was that they were a part of the previous time when we had this kind of a panel discussion and then they heard about QS and applied and uh, they had ambitious plans to coming into Europe and Finland. And we, even though we usually have been focusing quite a lot on the local startups, this summer we decided that we kind of wanted to expand also to include companies from elsewhere. And, and well, they were the only company outside of from Europe, but uh, they really had a good thing going on and we felt like we could help them. So we took them. So yeah, um, we do programs about two to three each year. The next one is probably going to be early 2022. And I would say that it's going to be some kind of an international focus. So if there's anyone out there who's interested in maybe coming to Finland through an accelerator program, then I suggest that like follow up us in social media and you can't miss the application deadline. But uh, yeah, we're otherwise very vertical agnostic nonprofit accelerator. So we're really open to the startups that we're helping. Essentially how we choose the startups that we help. It's only about what kind of problem are you solving and 
well, do you have like a track record of doing things? Like, do you have a good momentum with what you're doing? And that's about it. But yeah, I, I think that pretty much sums it up what we're doing. Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, you know, Divya, I would love to move to you next. I, I'm, I'm, of course, consciously alternating between our friends in India and Finland. Uh, Divya, if you can give us a quick introduction, uh, you know, to the Manipal uh, group and how how big a role does the uh, incubator and accelerator that you run, which uh, was a part of the group, plays? Got that. Got that, Gautam. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, like, representing Manipal group that operates... Uh, higher academic institutions and universities across the world, uh, including in Karnataka, Sikkim, Jaipur, Malaysia, Dubai, and other regions, uh, each having a center of excellence and incubation center to foster innovation and entrepreneurship in their respective regions. Uh, that's where uh, there is a lot of uh, synergy that we uh, create amongst ourselves. So uh, you may say a startup leveraging emerging technology in agriculture uh, because Sikkim is very rich in agriculture and in organic farming and Jaipur being uh, one of the emerging hubs in technology, uh, we uh, clearly collaborate amongst ourselves to uh, support those startups. And uh, startups from different regions are able to leverage these centers primarily by exploring market access through these incubators and enablers. Uh, and uh, Manipal Group also happens to be the second largest player in healthcare services in India, only after Apollo Hospitals. And uh, this creates a huge market opportunity, huge pilot opportunity for any startups emerging in healthcare. And we are able to leverage that strength in the group uh, for the startups. And uh, as I mentioned about the various university uh, university campuses across the world. Uh, Manat Manipal in Karnataka happens to be one of the largest university towns in the world. So in these large student campuses, they're close to 70,000 odd students. And we know how student campuses are breeding grounds for both game developers and gamers. And I mean, uh, gaming is another sector that we are exploring as an incubator uh, to support startups, both in terms of game developers and uh, in terms of uh, the huge market potential that it holds. And, and you know, the, the minute you mentioned gaming, I could see Patrick's eyes go big because from what I know, Finland has always been the capital of, uh, you know, gaming developers, right? We've got the biggest gaming companies out of Finland. And I, I still remember uh, in one of the conversations earlier, we had uh, Peter, Peter as well, Peter Westerbaka on one of our webinars. And, you know, he was also excited about the uh, opportunity for gaming out of India. So I think as we as we move this forward, we'll definitely take this a bit deeper. But Mirza, thank you so much for joining us. And I would love to have you have a quick introduction because you've been building Red Brick Accelerator out of Kampare. Uh, it will be great for all of us to know more about the good work that Red Brick's been doing. Thanks, Gautam, and uh, greetings from uh, Tampere, Central Finland. Uh, my name is Mirza, I'm the founder of Red Brick Accelerator. Uh, we are public funded accelerator supporting startups from idea stage all the way to first clients, first investments. Um, we have been doing this for close to three years now, and Red Brick is supported by Tampere University and Business Tampere, that is a regional um, economic development agency. So. I'm pointing this out because this model is quite common in Finland, which means that we are in a position not to charge startups to, to, to get in the program. And uh, I think that's, that's, I'm a big fan of this, of this way of doing things um, because it's very, very low key. Um, we, uh, as mentioned before, run in batches, in, in rounds. And uh, this year we did four, uh, well, three and one more coming up in October four batches in, in plan. And uh, actually these uh, webinars are becoming uh, really useful because we also got one uh, very ambitious Indian startup from the last one and it was part of our summer batch. So uh, big, big thanks again for uh, connecting us to amazing Indian founders. Uh, yeah, like probably we'll explore more about, about uh, what kind of uh, channels channels we we can we can provide here but basically regarding startup planning i think incubators are 
a good um, option to consider. And uh, also a proper landing, I'd be happy to share about first cases we have arriving to Tampere uh, this, this summer. So uh, more about that, hopefully, a bit later. Uh, Thanks. Uh, I, I think, you know, the uh, conversation, I wouldn't call this a panel, but this conversation between four amazing enablers has already started on a very good note. Uh, great to know that Indian startups have already been getting into rhetoric and cures. So that's, you know, the, the enabler in me is very happy already, uh, Mirza and Patrick. So on that note, Amay, I would love to ha have a quick question to you. Uh, in your view, because I've been following GeoGen Next, uh, and if I remember, there's already about 13 cohorts or 14 cohorts that you've successfully done. And now you've moved into a rolling uh, program and not necessarily the cohorts. Uh, and you know, if I remember right, about 160 plus startups that you've helped so far, uh, or accelerated so far. Uh, what, according to you, if you had to logically break it down into you know uh, components for the benefit of a lot of our friends who run accelerators and incubators on, on this call from India and Finland, what are some of the key pillars that led to the success of GeoGen Next? Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to zoom out a little bit and, you know, uh, focus on the ecosystem as such. Uh, and talk about you know what are the what are the pillars for the Indian ecosystem that are extremely important, and then the role that we play within that ecosystem. Um, so you know I think uh, uh, according to me there are essentially ten stakeholders uh, that that are key. The first one of course is the government, um, and you know with their startup India policies and incentives. Uh, I think they've, you know, rapidly sort of made a lot of progress over the years in, in, in enabling uh, the startup ecosystem. And that has helped, uh, uh, you know, the ecosystem quite a bit. Uh, you know, whether, whether you look at their FDI uh, policies or whether you look at their angel tax or, you know, other tax incentives that they've, you know, put forth, um, uh, you know, all these things have really helped startups make, make rapid progress. And of course, there is obviously a lot of uh, stuff that can still happen, right? The second very critical component of uh, the ecosystem uh, for us has been, uh, as we've seen these 160 startups grow, has been the angel investors uh, and the networks, uh, both from a market access point of view, as well as, you know, just a you know, financial investment point of view. Uh, this community has been extremely important to us uh, to enable the early stage growth for uh, startups. Um, and it's fairly organized now, which is great to see. Um, the third, of course, is, you know, all the VC funds uh, that look at from product to scale up. In fact, in the first half of 2021, uh, India saw about $27.1 billion of investments in, in, in venture capital uh, going in. And that's significant, uh, right? And we've not seen that kind of growth. It's 33% year on year growth uh, that we've seen over last year. Uh, then the fourth one is obviously the private equity funds. Uh, you know, when I did my startup in 2006, seven, uh, you know, people didn't even understand the difference between, or I didn't understand the difference between even uh, a, a venture capital fund and a private equity fund because everything looked pretty much the same. But now these two have been decoupled and, you know, they're very clear focus in terms of where private equity funds play a role. The fifth, I would say, uh, are the, uh, sort of incubators and accelerators and Divya, uh, you know, I think excellent uh, stuff that you guys are doing at Manipal, right? And that's extremely important for early stage mentoring uh, and also resource support. Uh, and both again from government as well as, you know, private uh, run institutions. Uh, the, the, the sixth one I would say are really the service providers, you know, which are tax consultants, uh, legal firms, company secretarial firms, these, these are also extremely important uh, to, to make sure that startups make rapid progress. Uh, I would say the next one is really the stock exchanges. Uh, you know, uh, in just 2021, we've seen about uh, $11.2 billion of announcements, out of which about $2 billion have been completed in terms of filings of IPO. Um, and, 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 and this is only in the Indian stock exchange. I mean, US is another $1.6 billion. So I think this is, you know, fantastic for, for startups. And, you know, again, this ties into, you know, the kind of work that we do. Uh, I would say that uh, mentors and advisors are equally important in an early stage. Um, and, and this ecosystem needs to be grown even further. Uh, 
I would say finally, you know, corporates like Reliance and Microsoft, Gautam, uh, play an extremely critical role from a customer access, from a technology access point of view. And finally, I would say the startups themselves, right? So it, it really takes a village to, to, you know, put this thing together and uh, for, for startups to make progress. And we really see ourselves as one of the stakeholders uh, in this whole ecosystem, uh, you know, uh, play, playing, playing a role that we can really in that sense. No, uh, Amit, thank you so much for you know actually laying out laying it out in logical blocks. It it really helps for a lot of us to visualize because you know we keep meeting these stakeholders day in and day out. But when we have this logically put out, we're able to also a appreciate you know what we do and then make the connections between that. So Patrick, I wanted to bring you in because at Kios, from what I know. Uh, you have dedicated programs, you know, uh, uh, solving for different needs of an entrepreneur, right? From helping them find co-founders if they're at a very early stage to, uh, you know, taking them from zero to one, uh, you know, and then taking them beyond that. So if you can run us through, you know, uh, like what Ame said, how do, you, uh, how do you bring the success for your startups? What are the various stakeholders that you involve because as a CEO of an accelerator, uh, you know, you need to work externally as well as internally, right? Externally working with the various stakeholders, the government, the corporates, the various other partners who help you with your applications, your mentorship, et cetera, and internally ensuring everything is going smooth. So if you can tell us what's been the secret behind Kiosk's success, that would be great. Yeah, so um, I don't know if there's really no secret. Uh, we believe a lot in this kind of curated help and customized experience. So I think it's really easy to make uh, assumptions or kind of create patterns in how to create successful startups. But the way we see it is that it's, it's always like depends so much on what you're doing and who are your customers and what are you building and what kind of help you need. So then also the stakeholders vary quite a lot. So we have some companies who just seem to need a pat on the shoulder and be told that, hey, go build great things. And then they just, you know, make it happen. They don't need anything else. Uh, then there's companies who need connections to corporates, for example. So we need to have corporates to the industry, industry side in Finland and especially like the large corporates in forestry or uh, some other kind of like really heavy industry that might be otherwise unreachable for a startup. Then we have companies who are looking to internationalize really fast. And if you're building some kind of a consumer app that is built around communities, then sometimes you don't need any help in that. But if you're looking to launch at a specific niche industry in, let's say, Germany or United States, then it really helps if you also have some connections there. So then we try to aggregate our connections to them, for example, through Business Finland or other local players that we have here. But when it comes to stakeholders, our attitude is that all connections we can get are kind of good because then when that startup comes that is going to need to know every single architect firm in Sweden, then we can like, we can somehow manage to get those foots between the doors in a way. Um, so one good example is that we had a talk with UNICEF, for example, and what they want to do is help, especially developing countries through startups. And we have a lot of startups that are working, especially in developing countries. And so, our collaboration is that we just push the startups that we feel like are working in that space to that direction. Now, those are not the same companies we push to Business Finland, or those are not the same companies we push to like Nokia or, or Kone or something. So to be honest, it's a lot of just like trying to understand the startups, both what they feel like is their current challenge and also our own assessment of what are they struggling with. And then we just try to find good connections and get them to talk to people who are smarter than us. And of course, the sort of lifeline of our programs is good coaches and people who have already built successful companies. So we have very little consultants coming in and telling that, hey, here's how you're going to build your company. I've never built a company, but here's how you're going to build your company. We don't, we don't believe in that. We believe that people who have actually done it before have the authority to also tell others what they probably should do. But yeah, so overall, a very big answer, just a lot of random connections and try to utilize them as best as we can. No, so, so Patrick, in fact, I'll tell you something. That is the role of the enabler, right? Because you've got 10 people around you. And all that we keep doing is, this is what my startup needs. 
which among my connections do I quickly make the introductions, right? Because our role is to be the bridge between, you know, the startup and the, and the you know, the destination they like to reach. Uh, it could be an exit, it could be an acquisition, it could be a customer, it could be hiring someone, right? Uh, and, and thanks for pointing that out. So Divya, a quick question to you because, uh, you know, there is a reason why we have the four panelists. Each of them come with a slightly different background in terms of the way their accelerator is structured or it, it works. So very specific question to you, Divya, is, uh, you know, you've got the strength of, you know, the, the Manipal group's backing, which is, you know, the leading, uh, you know, group in the hospital space, right, or the medical space. You've got about 4 million patients coming to your hospitals a year. Uh, so any startup that wants to run healthcare experiments, they don't have to look anywhere else. And on the education side, also, like you said, close to about 100,000 students that, you know, go through your educational institutions a year. So anything that involves a the youngsters that a startup wants to experiment and 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 pilot or the sick, right? So you know both these segments get to test with your uh, space. So how are you effectively utilizing uh, you know the uh, industry backing that you have with the startups at the early stage? Because I know for a fact that you work with startups at a very early stage. So my question to you is, uh, how is that bridge in reality being implemented in the Manipal Accelerator? Got that. Uh, so uh, in the Manipal group being, as you mentioned, uh, one of the leading groups in healthcare, uh, they are quite proactive in terms of implementing uh, innovative technologies in their systems so that, so that they can deliver much better and impactful services going forward. Uh, so they have given us a clear mandate as an incubator that we got to source the most effective technologies, uh, the newest technologies that are operating out of the country that are being formed maybe by these uh, early stage startups, students, innovators, researchers, uh, and uh, connect them to their uh, centers, the various uh, medical centers that are being operated by the group. Uh, and a case in point, there is... Uh, right in the middle of uh, COVID wave two in April, May 2021, uh, we, we actually brought out a challenge where everything was about COVID. We brought out a challenge called COVID Solve across uh, to curate startups from across the country that were solving for COVID, be it a, a, a medical oxygen generator or a, a herbal mask or any other thing that could potentially solve any problem related to COVID-19. And uh, that is what we could get easily around 200 startups and uh, curate them, filter them, mentor them, take them through a program of around four months and uh, connect them through a demo day with the Manipal hospitals authorities so that the digital and the technology authorities there so that they could uh, identify how they could implement and adopt those technologies, those solutions created by those startups. Uh, this was a very, very clear and recent uh, case in point. And this is how we are. We think that we are able to, uh, I mean, impact and I think solve for both the corporate uh, arm of Manipal Group and also the startups that we are supporting as an incubator. Thank you so much, Divya. And uh, Mirza, a quick question to you is, you know, yours is a slightly different structured, uh, you know, accelerator because yours is one a based out of not Helsinki, but a slightly smaller town, if I can call it uh, a tier two city in Finland, which probably doesn't enjoy the same amount of visibility that and resources that a Helsinki has, right? And that comes with its own challenges. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably assuming that in today's virtual world that is bridged, but, uh, you know, giving you uh, you know some support i know for a fact that it is a lot more difficult building an accelerator out of a smaller city so my question to you is a you have you have the uh, need to build and support startups out of a smaller city and b yours is also a structure where it's semi government and and semi private right so uh, why don't you run us through what are some of the factors uh, both challenges as well as opportunities while running such a different accelerator. 
Thanks, Gautam. I would be happy to. I think in 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 our case, it's uh, even more. It counts that it takes a village to raise a startup because when resources are tight, then everybody chips in, and um, uh, it indeed works in that way. I am I am proud to say that we have such a close collaboration with all ecosystem players in Tampere, and uh, ecosystem was changing a lot, especially in the last uh, four or five years. So every next step of, of ecosystem development was made so that we create some kind of joint funnel that will create um, uh, longer support and there will, wouldn't be a lot of overlapping. And I would say that this principle extends to more or less whole Finland. Uh, there's collaboration over competition and I, I think it is giving good results. Um, the situation with us is that we have um, startups who are serial entrepreneurs, for example, but we also work with university who has not only students, but let's again mention, just like Lars said, researchers are always a super interesting group to, to pinpoint and a lot of great deep tech ideas always come from, from the research. So in that sense, uh, being uh, agnostic when it comes to uh, industries that, that helps and give floor to different different kind of startups in at least beginner stage until, until they start to um, get some uh, stronger traction. Um, speaking on, again, ecosystem in, in central Finland and Tampere, I think uh, ed tech, health tech, uh, imaging, like mentioned, connectivity, um, uh, th those circular economy, those are a little bit stronger industries. And uh, if any, any startups out there wonder uh, what is so special about our uh, ecosystem here then some guidelines guidelines there uh, but yeah uh, something that we will be doing more and more is uh, getting startups from abroad and uh, just as for this morning we got the second uh, startup uh, founder uh, from from our network who uh, landed safely in in Helsinki and is on the way to Tampere so we, we just heard in the morning uh, and this is something new, and this started uh, late last year, but something that gives me a lot of hope that we can build even new bridges and uh, maybe provide accelerators as uh, some kind of landing instrument for ambitious founders who like to, to relocate in Finland and uh, continue doing and developing their companies here. Absolutely, Marzan. I think, you know, that's uh, music to a lot of our ears especially myself, Amay and Divya, because we work with startups day in and day out, right? Because uh, apart from Head Start, the other hats that I wear is I work closely with startups as a part of Microsoft, where it's like the VC ecosystem. And for me also, it's 24 seven startups. And something that's very interesting, Mirza, to hear is, you know, the, the, some of the sectors and trends that you and Patrick were mentioning. Uh, you know, in fact, Puneet also did mention that in terms of education being an area of, of strength in Finland. Uh, you know, the, the, the way education is also brought in and taught, right? And second is, uh, we, we mentioned gaming uh, or entertainment being very big uh, in terms of in Finland. And you mentioned circular economy, right? Circular economy, uh, Patrick mentioned uh, climate change. In fact, one of the Indian startups building around climate change, uh, you know, happened to get into chaos, right? So, uh, you know, uh, th these are a few sectors and you did mention healthcare. So these are very strong sectors for India as well, right? Healthcare, clean tech or circular economy, uh, you know, gaming or entertainment, and finally education. And these are four sectors, uh, which I know for a fact that Divya and Ame uh, would lap it up, right? Because for them, these are very, very big sectors in their respective groups as well as a part of the accelerators. So I would actually want to, you know, have a closing comment from each of you, uh, a quick minute from each of you, but something very, very specific uh, because we've got a lot of folks on both the Indian and Finnish side. On the Indian side, we have a lot more startups wanting to get into Kios and Red Brick, right? Because, uh, you know, Head Start has been receiving, uh, you know, uh, messages saying, who was the startup that got into Kios? How do we speak to them to understand, uh, you know, what is their experience? How can we also apply to Kios? Can Head Start you know, drop a recommendation to Patrick, right? So all these kind of mails that have been coming to us, uh, what we're seeing is also the reverse, right? We're going to see a lot more Finnish startups which have got great products that uh, are being, you know, helped by Kios and Red Brick that are looking at a larger market to enter, say, India. And, you know, Divya and Ame, of course, 
uh, would be to great partners in that journey of helping some of the startups from red brick and kios to enter india uh, you know especially the four five sectors that we mentioned so am i a quick closing thought from you uh, you know this is more to address the finish founders that are there on this call uh, what what do you think is the next step or some of the you know a direction that all of us as enablers should take uh, in encouraging some of these finish startups that uh, you know patrick mirza they are all accelerating to look at india as a market yeah absolutely and uh, you know thanks for bringing that up uh, gautam and you know it's it's interesting that uh, you know we should also look at the reverse which is uh, to look at finnish startups coming into india and i was just doing some research and you know i on finland and i saw that there have been several successes uh, coming out of finland right i mean like supercell rovio etc um, in fact about 300000 uh plus businesses uh, overall with uh, around 4000 startups per year and 90% are micro enterprises or uh, you know msmes or you know startups so it's a it's a very vibrant ecosystem and uh, certainly we can uh, benefit from that um on on some further search you know i was just looking at series a to b funded uh, startups in finland uh, that are in the 10 to 50 million annual revenue range and about 50 names came up and you know i just wanted to pitch an idea to uh, patrick and uh, mirza that you know if you were to look at uh, you know just bringing these 50 companies to india getting them to commit uh, to you know 0.2 to 1% of their annual revenue to set up a set up a team out here uh, you know either independently or in collaboration with an with an indian partner um, and with an outlook of you know 10 years uh with a 10% increase on budget year on year i think you would you would do wonders but the idea in india is to actually commit and and to stay here for the long term to reap the benefits uh and if you come with that kind of an approach i think uh, you know the benefits are uh, enormous and the reason why you would need local partners and not just incubators accelerators but actually founders uh, who can accelerate uh, the entry of uh, finished startups in india is because you need the local knowledge uh, and and the understanding uh, uh, you know uh, mirza was talking about deep tech startups uh, it would be wonderful for you all to partner with uh, business co-founders in india who can take your products to market uh, in in a much faster way and with very little investment so i would really encourage you in your network to encourage finnish companies um, uh, you know 50 60 companies if you can target to get them to commit 100k per year with a 10% increase with an outlook for 10 years uh you know to come and scout and partner with indian companies in jv structures i think uh, it can really do wonders so that's that's my specific uh, you know uh whatever advice <laughs> to no, you absolutely yeah, man i think it's 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 uh, mirza and patrik i would want you also to have your closing comment uh, you know to the indian accelerators listening to you and the indian founders listening to you and of course you can choose to respond to me as well yeah i'll be short uh, i definitely agree with ami i see this as a two way street collaboration and we should definitely develop stronger bridges um i think it's also uh, important to have a very good uh, trust and communication between operative and strategic level as much as we implement whatever we do i think there's a big and big amount of trust that we are being given by our enablers who who help us help us do what we do so as pointed out before running an accelerator i think involves playing with so many different helping hands on the way and i definitely see us here as helping hands to each other so would uh, love to uh, help more indian startups land in finland and more finnish startups expand in india in the in the near future so maybe that can be my ending governance governance thought of 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 this uh, topic thank you so much mr patrick and divya quick comments yeah maybe it'll just i i think all of the good ideas have already been set out so maybe i'm just going to have a short comment but there's definitely an asymmetry in the just sheer size in the countries right and i think the sort of types of startups that are coming from india to finland are going to be different than the ones who are going from finland to india um how are they going to be different we talked about some of the industries already but i think also in the nature of the startups like finnish startups have to go international super fast because otherwise 
they're they're not gonna be like successful companies in many ways or like they're gonna like wither out i guess um but yeah just just as a closing thought i think that's something we all have to like keep in mind and is also going to follow us and when we're like trying to land companies here from india as well as uh trying to land companies to india from finland but anywho agree with all of the points said above divya do you want to have like the last word sure thanks thanks uh uh yes i mean very clearly uh, mentioned by my three fellow panelists about how uh, things can be laid out in the future uh and i totally agree to that one very specific case in point that uh, i i would want to share is uh, like gaming as we mentioned earlier uh, which is which is one of the very strong grounds in finland uh, and india is one of the fastest growing markets in this sector growing by 40% uh, year on year with 250 new gaming companies in the last 10 years that have come up uh, and we've seen uh, one of those ipo uh, of a gaming com- gaming giant nazara technologies so this is clear signal that the way the market is evolving in this space and how emerging technologies technologies are really disrupting the space uh, and we uh, as an incubator have a good strength in terms of uh, ar and vr augmented reality virtual reality and other such emerging technologies and we really want to leverage those strengths in terms of supporting startups in uh, talent uh mentoring uh and technology uh and i mean the market access that is the most crucial aspect here uh so really would want to work with startups from finland uh and provide access to the such a vast market that's present uh that we have as a inherent strength in terms of the ecosystem and also uh, would want to uh, share resources in terms of uh, the other support that is required uh, that we can offer Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I, I think you know uh, we have, of course, slightly overshot time. Apologies to the audience, but uh, this is a topic that's close to my heart. You know, community and enablers, and uh, the kind of synergies we started exploring right on this call uh, was music to my ears. I couldn't control myself. I wanted to let it go on, but I think this is going to be the start to something really big and really you know exciting for a lot of us enablers. in joining the dots between india and finland you know joining the dots between the enablers in india and finland because uh, you know like what mirza said it takes a village to you know uh, build a startup here but when you know all of us come together the speed at which all these startups benefit because some of us have the strength when it comes to incubating them taking them from idea to product some of us have access to the customers some of us some of us have, have access to the markets so i think it's it's in the interest of the startups for all of us to work together and you know the seeds have been sown today so look forward to working closely with all of you gentlemen thank you so much for joining us today so santeri i would love to invite you over to take it forward from here for the next track which is extremely interesting for those who are looking at moving from research to business uh, funding or monetization you know because both the countries india and finland like what our panelists mentioned have very very strong uh, academic research uh, you know and we've also been successful in taking it to monetization and that's where santeri from business finland is going to take it forward from here on a panel with uh, uh, four four panelists from both sides yeah thank you thank you very much and thank you everybody for the last session it was absolutely brilliant i think everybody really enjoyed that uh before we get started with the next session uh let me quickly introduce myself i will be moderator for this session i'm sandri oel from business finland uh i look after the talent boost program and i also work as a second secretary to business finland here in new delhi i have been living in india the past Three years, and I have been actively working on Indo-Finnish startup collaboration, and we have been working hard to build the bridge between the two startup ecosystems. And I think this event is quite good example of it. Um, before we get started with the next session, let me quickly remind you something that I already wrote in the chat. We are. collecting feedback from the events we organize especially in the business finland side in order that we know what our audience thinks thinks about the 
campaigns and activities be organized. So I would highly uh, hope that some of you could take time and answer our feedback survey. I just shared the link in the chat. So take a look and, and use one or two minutes to, to give us some feedback how we have been doing organizing these events. All right, so let's move on to the next session. Um, I would now request our speakers to switch on their video and audio in order that we can get started. This session is about commercializing research, research to business funding, as well as innovation collaboration. And um, let me briefly introduce our speakers in order we can get started. The first speaker will be Dr. Mika Tironen. He can be there on the top right corner of your screen. Dr. Tironen is the Councillor of Education and Science at the Embassy of Finland to India. And Mika has also done a very extensive research career in molecular genetics. And also after his research career, he has made a second career in science diplomacy all over the world, in Europe, North America, China, as well as India as his latest destination. He's been serving as a senior advisor to the Ministry of Science of Finland for multiple years and decades. Our second speaker will be Jan Rantanen. She is a senior advisor at Business Finland, and she looks after the research to business funding at Business Finland, and she will be telling you a little bit more about that. Then uh, from Indian side, we have Professor Narayanan. He is a healthcare biotechnologist and a pr principal scientist at IIT Madras and their bio incubator. He has done a very significant amount of, uh, he has a lot of experience in industrial collaboration and especially from the Nordic and Scandinavian markets, which is very, very interesting for us. Uh, he's been working with spin-offs, SMEs and biotech firms all across Europe. So welcome. And lastly, and we have Professor Pakvatula. He's a professor in entrepreneurship at the IIM Bangalore, and he has made his research career in entrepreneurship and social networks. Uh, and mainly he's been operating in the technology domain. So welcome, welcome Suresh. Nice to, nice to have you all here. Uh, we will start this session with the opening words from the Embassy of Finland. So Dr. Mika Tironen, the stage is yours. Thank you, Svantari. I, uh, I tried to start sharing my screen. So let's see if I, if I can handle this. Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah, we see the, your slides. Okay, perfect. So thank you, Santeri, and greetings from the Embassy of Finland from New Delhi. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's lovely to be here and, and tell something about Finland as a country of innovation. So I give some um, basic data and then some uh, ideas of the new developments that we have in Finland in this field, especially in the interface of the academia and industry. I always love to start with this slide uh, where we summarize a bit of those rankings globally where Finland uh, use, is, is used to be seen it at the top, like the happiest country in the world, most innovative country and so on. So. Uh, we have been doing very well, and especially now I'm, I'm focusing on this innovation part. This is a very interesting map of Europe. Uh, there's a European Innovation Scoreboard, where the green color means the innovation leaders in, in Europe. And as you see, the northern, uh, northern countries are doing very strong in these uh, comparisons. UK and, and Switzerland, which is not belonging to EU, uh, also are, are the, the top countries uh, year after another. Uh, in Finland, we have a quite extensive university network. The country population is, is small, but we, we have scattered uh, the institutes all over the country to keep it uh, keep innovations basically everywhere. We have 12 academic universities and 23 UAS and then a bunch of uh, national research institutes that are in, in charge of the thing. Okay, this is a bit complicated picture. Don't get scared. Actually, there are only two boxes in the middle indicating two key funders uh, that are giving money for, for uh, innovation work in Finland, the, namely the Academy of Finland with Strategic Research Council. Uh, they take care of mostly of the basic research 
uh, fundamental studies which are the prerequisite to any innovation as we all understand and then business finland which is a uh, which will be heard today also with a separate presentation these two bodies are the main funders and then of course the ministry uh, ministries that give funds directly to these institutes when we talk about innovations uh, we need strong our uh, research behind that and that's why I, I love to show you a slide with, which indicates the strong areas of Finnish science when if you look at the citation indexes so we all know that Finland is strong in ICT uh, we know mobile technologies and so on what is not so well known is that also in humanities and business studies Finland is uh, is ranked pretty high here number one means the mean value in OECD countries so anything above one is is quite quite good and then also uh, clinical medicine and other areas of engineering are, are, are uh, traditionally strong in Finland I would love to take your attention uh, briefly to, to, to a new new program in Finland because this reflects what is happening in the country in bigger scheme so this is the Academy of Finland flagship program where uh, the Academy has selected 10 flagship uh, projects or networks and and these are quite nicely funded the first six teams got funding for three years around uh, 0.5 billion uh, euros and these are not only research teams they are networks of excellence where we have not only uh, academic uh, uh, excellence but also uh, companies uh, involved and also spin-offs uh, that that are developing from these uh, these things like uh, 6G for instance Finland is a forerunner in that area AI cancer research and, and so on so for instance I can mention this uh, University of Helsinki cancer uh, network actually there are also other universities involved they have very strong genetic data analysis uh, diagnosis and prevention uh, which has attracted many big pharma companies like AstraZeneca, Pfizer, GSK, Novartis to do collaboration with, with the uh, University of Helsinki and also attracted one of the most cited scientists ever, uh, Mark Daly, to, to become the head of the, the Molecular Institute in Helsinki. So this tells a bit about the strength of, of these networks that uh, they are developing in the country currently. Uh, here are the the new new four four teams uh here also about helsinki university i wish to mention uh they established the new fund uh funding or investing policy where they especially uh invest to to uh startups of their own students so supporting the student uh uh, activity in, in becoming entrepreneurs uh, based on the innovations that they're doing in the university so this is a new quite new thing and I think that in recent years there have been very interesting developments in the country in, in this area um, then just briefly to mention that in also in otherwise Finland is gathering kind of a, a critical mass in in uh, data uh, processing uh, we, we are we are having the the fastest supercomputer in public research in the world uh, this is lumi lumi computer where also finland is receiving funding from eu and 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 there are around 10 10 uh, member countries that are funding this thing and google is investing a lot to to finland in hamina data center 2 billion euro and this is one of the company's most advanced uh, data centers uh, just briefly about Finland and India, we are doing exciting things here. Uh, this March, our prime ministers met and they had digital uh, that uh, online meeting where they agreed about partnerships in digitalization and sustainability. We have a joint science and technology commission where we take these initiatives forward, uh, and of course we have some funding schemes. Uh, between the Academy of Finland and the, and the departments of science and technology and biotechnology and, and then other networks funded by the ministry so 
quite nice tools, but I think we need to develop this further. If you want to see more about Finnish uh, research, uh, please go to this website. You can seek for uh, individual scientists. You can uh, have the publications, uh, seek uh, searches and so on. A lot of interesting data about research. And if you are interested about funding, they also indicate all recent and uh, uh, upcoming uh, deadlines uh, of, of different uh, uh, foundations and, and, and the academies. And then also stay tuned. We tell more about Finland and its excellence in different areas in this webinar series, Future is Made in Finland, which starts on Thursday, October the 7th. So stay tuned. Uh, this is an exciting exercise as well. So I think this is enough now, and then we can hear more from the, our experts and then uh, then have some sort of chat at the end. Thanks. Thank you. Nice Thank you, Mika. You can just stop sharing so we can see the panel again. All right. Thank you very much for your insights. And let's move on. So idea right now is that move, we move a little bit towards startups and industries. So next, Jana will be speaking about um, research to business funding at Business Finland, as well as kind of opportunities for research research based startups in Finland and what we at Business Finland are in doing are doing in order to help help those companies. So Jana, please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. I I first have I tried to find my my slides. Ooh, I didn't know it's it's not that easy. <laughs> oh yeah, they're here. Sorry. Yeah. What about now? Uh, now it works. I am just able to see also the next slide, but I think it's quite fine. So it's visible to all of us. So we so can this, we so can not, move on. Okay. I, I don't know how to do it better. So I hope you are not <laughs> annoyed with this one. I no, can I do think, it like I this. I think it's, it's, it's clearly visible. So it's okay. Kind okay. Of good, good enough. So we, can, we okay. can move on. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to tell you about uh, business Finland's funding for research cases which want to want to um, commercialize their uh, research findings so we the goal for this funding is to support the creation of new internationally competitive growth business which is actually the goal for all our fundings uh, and then um, this funding is is granted for Finnish, Finnish public research organizations and, and this is uh, only for public organizations. So if you have a company or something, this is not the funding because this is research funding. Uh, this, this means that the organization wants to commercialize what they have. Actually, they, they don't know if it's possible. They want to kind of make surveys and, uh, and uh, some applied research to find out if, it's, if, if they can commercialize it or not. They have to have the IPR for the background and also for the results. So if the researcher owns the IPR, it's no go for us. This funding is 70% funding. So the university or research institute needs 30% of their own funding for, for these projects. And in this project, they can, they can explore different paths for commercialization. So most of them aim to, to, to have a startup at the, uh, after this project, but, but they have to kind of dig out what is there for, for a startup, is there business possibility for a startup or is it better to, to license or sell it to a, to a bigger company who can, who can then go to the market with it. And of course, sometimes it's, it's obvious that, that there is no business case, there is no a customer who would be who would be willing to to pay pay something, and this is this is available only for Finnish research organizations. And what we evaluate in the applications, we have two calls per year, and and we get kind of something like two, 120 applications per year, and it's 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 quite a lot of work to evaluate these. The more important one is, is what kind of evidence they already have, have from their research, what they want to commercialize. So if it's, if it's basic research, it's just an, 
theory or something. So they are to, in too early phase. So they have to have some kind of evidence that the idea works already in the lab. We also want to see what kind of team there is, uh, what, what experience they have and what kind of skills. And of course, the most important thing also is that they have some, someone who, who knows or has experience from commercialization, so they know perhaps the international markets and they know how the business works. So they have to hire one in their team. And quite in quite many teams, we have international researchers also. So they are mostly mostly people who are doing their, master, uh, their doctor's thesis or they are professors or, or so, so they are at the high end or, or in, in the university and they, they want to see their research, research results to be used in real life. But this is, as they are researchers, we want to see also that they are actually committed to the commercialization. So sometimes they, they, are, they are willing to continue the research, but they are not so keen on, on the commercialization. They can say it so on the paper, but we want to see that they, they have the passion also for the commercialization. We want to see, of course, that the, the business that they are targeting to, it, it's, it's scalable and their size is big enough. So it's, in, uh, it's worth for us to, to grant the funding. What's, what is their competitive edge? So they have to do their homework before they apply. So they have already some, some these, these um, estimates, let's say so, uh, when they apply the funding. Of course, we want to see the project plan, what measures they are doing, what the, resource, the resources they, are, they have in their use. And we want them to uh, plan also the milestones, what they, they have in their projects, so we can see how they proceed and if they are successful, and what are the final goals? Are they heading to a startup or is the main, main goal to, to, to try to sell the IPR to, to a bigger company? And as I already told, the, the main goal for most of them is, is, the, is the startup. And then we want to, want to um, know who of those researchers are willing to establish the startup. So if it's if it's in balance of, of, of the, of the uh, business and then the steering group is very important. What kind of people and experience they have in, in the steering group? Is it only researchers, professors or is there people who know the business so they can advise and guide the, the um, research group? Well, to take the, the um, right direction in, in, in the, the uh, crossings they have in, in their projects. And, and when we get these, when we have these, these calls, we, we, um, we of course compare all the, of the applications. So we only um, grant funding for, for the best ones and they all have to fulfill the criteria we have. So there is no, no, uh, way to get under the criteria. Um, as, I, as, I, as I told you, there are quite a many, actually, I, it sounds like, it looks like that in these project teams, there are quite a, a many international researchers. So uh, they are more willing to um, head to, to business and uh, to establish a startup than maybe the Finnish, Finnish researchers. So it's, there's a, some kind of um, they, they can be seen more in these projects than, than in the research projects as, as themselves. So maybe it's also that they want to stay in Finland, which is a good one, good, good uh, base for, for the start startup also. And then uh, after this project, I, you can see here the, the funding path uh, for research-based startups in Finland. As, as um, Mika already told that Academy of Finland is the big um, fund, funder for, for research in Finland. And after the basic research phase, uh, they can, the researchers can and apply this research to business funding. Actually, this is the, the only type of funding in Finland that is useful, useful for them to 
kind of uh, find out if their research is um, has the possibility also also to to be a product in the market. Uh, and after they have decided to to establish a company, and they 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 have the business idea ID in Finland, they can apply other uh, funding from Business Finland, which we call tep Tempo or RD funding. Uh, of course, there is their own criteria for these fundings, but but still, it's it is it is very normal that at least I would say 90, 95 percent of those new startups they they apply these these fundings. But to get these funding uh, for from Business Finland, they also need seed seed funding from business angels or or, or VCs. So so. And none of our funding is 100% funding for, for the company. So it's it's vital that they find also uh, business angels and other, other funders. Of course, if they have uh, enough money in their own pocket, which said they can put in the in the startup, it's 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 fine for us also. And then we have this, uh, 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 let's say the cream de la cream uh, funding for, for startups, which we call young innovative company funding, which can get quite a lot of funding in, in the in a row, but then they already have their business uh, running and they can they want to scale up and, and there's a bigger possibility that we can speed up their, their growth in, in internationally. So this is the very short view for our funding for research based Startups. Of course, we have other other services also, but this is just to show the funding funding in these states. Okay, Th thank you. That that's all. If you have any questions, I can try to answer them later on. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was very 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 valuable information and exactly what we wanted to share with our audience today. We wanted we and we have had many speakers from Business Finland and I think the people who have followed throughout this session have seen that Business Finland is actually a very versatile public organization. We are funding, we are funding companies, we are funding research groups and we are also providing support with market access to international markets for Finnish companies. But then in turn, we are also doing a lot of work here in the global markets by attracting investments and supporting foreign uh, startups to find opportunities in Finland. And uh, I just want to highlight at this point, as you have now got connected with many of our experts, that our work and very important part of our work is to help you people and kind of take these cases forward. So don't hesitate to contact us and we are more than happy to help you. Because this is an international discussion uh, between Finland and India. Now we really want to hear the Indian point of view. And I would first like to hear from Professor Narayanan. Uh, I would like to hear your comments and reflections to what you have heard during this session, as well as the earlier tracks. This is very interesting and we are very much looking forward to your comments as you have been doing a lot of uh, work in Scandinavia and Europe. So, so Narayanan, please, stage is yours. Would we'll be, we'll be more than happy to hear your thoughts. Hey, uh, hey, Santavi, thanks. Thanks for this opportunity. And uh, thank you, Gautam, and the whole Ed Start team to begin with. And then cordial greetings to my fellow panelists, Mikhail and Anand Suresh. So it's, it's very nice to share um, you know, the thoughts on uh, comparative aspects between Scandinavian and uh, Indian innovation ecosystems. Because um, from my opportunity, uh, which I got to be associated with the Scandinavian ecosystem uh, for almost five years, uh, uh, that was more in Science for Life Laboratory at uh, Stockholm. And currently at the IIT Madras Bio Incubator, where we are located, Chennai, uh, the, the capital city on the Coromandel Coast, uh, and Marina, India's longest urban beach. So one thing that is strikingly similar is 
the integrated approach of the ecosystem per se, especially when it comes to you know um, business type of R and D, what Yana beautifully uh, put across, starting from the basic research, moving on to applied research, and then the business R and D, and finally towards marketing and inter internationalization. So this flow, the process flow, seems uh, very operative especially when it comes to an integrated approach. So when I mean an integrated approach, so this has to encompass various dimensions, starting from infrastructure, and then acquisition of the right skill sets, and then providing them the basic operational platforms, them I mean the entrepreneurs, be it you know, the faculty entrepreneurs or the student entrepreneurs or any such other outside entrepreneurs who enter into the uh, uh, research R&D and the business R&D ecosystem. So this integrated approach is very interesting in terms of providing the right balance that any successful startup or an upcoming startup needs to hold. And this handholding is exactly what you know incubators and accelerators are trying to provide. And with this, uh, a small difference that I noticed somehow is that in the Scandinavian or broader, you know, in, in European platform, we mostly see uh, this kind of uh, wider RTOs, what we call as, you know, research and development technology organizations, even promoted by bigger agencies like European Commission. They work as a single entity, providing almost all the support needed from ideation, moving on to customer discovery, and then, you know, through the transition into the scale up and tech transfer and subsequent commercialization. Whereas in the Indian models, we are trying to reach close towards that, but still we work in modules and exact transition point between these modules or more, you know, the pitfalls and then the fall downs that almost many startups face. And this is these uh, transitions, what we are trying to patch up, you know, in our own technological and uh, other infrastructural uh, support ways. And, and we are close moving towards there. And perhaps in the next five years to you know eight years, uh, the situation changes so that we could be uh, lending uh, complementary benefits to both the ecosystem. So this is how I see the current situation now. Thank you. Thank you, Narayanan. Um, before I let Yana and Mika answer, I would like to ask from prof and invite Professor Pakpatula on, on our stage and 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 ask from you uh, to share share your thoughts because uh, kind of from your profile you have done a lot of work in entrepreneurship research and ecosystem management in India and kind of now when you have been following this discussion and session how do you see kind of international opportunities for Indian startups and research groups in Finland from your point of view and then very importantly, other way around for Finnish, Finnish researchers and entrepreneurs uh, in, in, Finlia, in, in, in India in order we can facilitate innovation collaboration between these two countries. So, uh, Professor Pakvatula, please. Yeah, yours. Thank, you. Thank, thank you very much, Santeri. Hello, everyone. And uh, greetings to all. Good evening, good afternoon. Um, thanks a lot for having me over. I am in a school that doesn't do much with technology, unlike uh, unlike IIT, which is one of those extremely reputed, in fact, the best uh, institute in India uh, of the last three years. Um, uh, IIT Madras has been number one institute in India. Um, so where do we come from? We have an open incubator. Most of the people who come here have already figured out the technology. So you are extremely open to anyone starting a venture who are looking at the market side of things and not necessarily on the technology side of things. So we do have many who either come here and figure out the technology because we have a wonderful campus currently not accessible to many of our startups because of the COVID lockdown. But up until recently, we had a very nice campus and a lot of uh, early stage startups have mentioned, especially in the tech domain, that they were able to hire good engineers because they were located inside the campus. And so therefore they get a lot of legitimacy, especially uh, technology startups. Because if you look at India and look at our ecosystem, um, we started to become more active in entrepreneurship around 2007, 8 timeframe. 
um, if you take away the 97, 90s growth of Infi and uh, Wipro, uh, and then a little bit of a dot com uh, run up that we had post bust around 2007-8, but that time we had seen a lot of tech companies. We had companies which were using deep tech technology to start ventures because many of them have worked in the US or in uh, some uh, um, at some technical level. But I guess all of the changed with Flipkart and uh, Tiger Global coming in and making India the, so, the, the market for startups because up until then they were looking at global startups, global markets, and then they started to look at India as a, a, a market. And then um, I guess we lost out on tech and deep tech ventures for quite some time. I guess it's time for us to recover, re recollect ourselves. Yes, we are having lots of unicorns, but most of them are not, not in the deep tech space and then, uh, or in the technology space. We just had our very reputed entrepreneur talk about uh, most investors have very little understanding of technology and which is why you're not seeing tech companies coming out of this is Kiran Majinder Shah speaking yesterday. Today, we, we don't see great tech companies coming, uh, deep tech uh, science-based companies coming out of India because a lot of our investors don't understand that part of uh, technology and the lead times are very, very high, right? They're long, they take significant time. We'd rather have somebody even say that we'll invest and seven months later, it's become a unicorn. Uh, you, you can't have those kind of ventures in uh, tech. So it's a very, very fledgling market uh, uh, in this uh, ecosystem as far as technology is concerned. And this is where I guess partnerships matter. So if you look at partnerships, I think Europe can have an affinity with uh, uh, Indian India here because um, when we look at our interactions with Japan, they take a lot of time. So our pace is slightly quicker than the Japanese, uh, but then we are much slower than Israel or the basically Israel. We try looking at Israel, but they, they go at breakneck speed. So if anybody would like to work with India, you need to understand that the time, pace, and everything is very slow here, right? So you can't be impatient at all. So, that, so, the, so, so for India, for you to work with India, especially for Finnish startups wanting to come here, the gravity is different, the time is different, the construct of how things happen are different, right? So there needs to be a huge uh, uh, um, uh, re-education and relearning that happens. Whereas for startups out of India wanting to go to Europe, I think it will be far more interesting because you're closer to larger markets like US, but before you go there, you could cut your teeth on slightly more advanced markets, but doesn't run at the pace at which the US runs. So it gives you a slightly uh, uh, a protected environment for you to figure out uh, early, early, early growth before if you would want to move west. So I see a great overlap in terms of uh, each other. And again, we have numbers, right? We have lots of people. Um, so if anybody is looking at market and market orientation, and we do have lots of talented individuals, especially at higher, higher education, right? So those partnerships given, um, I'm sorry, I haven't looked up, but uh, I don't, really don't know the population of Finland, but I'm not expecting it to be... Um, uh, in like, I don't know, I'm taking a guess. Is it um, uh, 10 million or like am I close? Or a, little, million? A, little, a little bit less. Uh, a little bit it's, less. Uh, 5.5 5 million. Um, so oh, we, oh, are, we are a small country. Well, yeah, you are a small country with a lot of uh, surface area. Um, but yeah, 5 million, you need us um, to partner because we have people here. And uh, so therefore a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, natural affinity for us to form a partnership because um, we could try things here, we could work things here. Since things go slower, that also gives protected space for some of these tech companies to come and be here because the gestation period for some of these things are very, very high, right? So I, I welcome this and I think it's good to have Finland and uh, India connections. And I see uh, uh, I, I, I really congratulate you on going very rapid in terms of 
India as a source of ideas, uh, a source of market for Finnish uh, startups, because I think time for these partnerships have come, right? We have sufficiently advanced in our understanding of entrepreneurial ecosystems that you could partner with this. Probably 10 years earlier, you would have been too early. 10 years later, you would have been too late. I think the time is quite right right now in order to form these partnerships. And I'm really glad that Gautam Amit and the whole team had start is like putting all efforts in order to make this um, uh, interaction possible. And I really, uh, 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 I, I need to commend the, the, that all the activities that you are doing to make this partnership work, right? So from where we stand, we are a completely non-tech guys, but if you need any business, a business kind of interactions, we do, we work a lot with women. We, we are one of the center for excellence as far as women entrepreneurship goes. We work with thousands of women entrepreneurs, um, uh, uh, both at the startup phase and at scale up stage. And then we do have social enterprises, but primarily our focus is on the business side of things and not on the technology side of things. Now, thanks for having me over. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Suresh. Uh, that kind of both of those comments, there were something something in common talking about deep, deep tech in Europe, in Finland, and kind of differences between those two countries. Partnerships matter was very beautifully said, and kind of they are kind of both sides to the coin. Uh, sometimes we can see that things happen quite fast in Finland when it comes to uh, deep tech side, but then in turn, actually, after being here for almost so this is my fourth year in India. I've also seen that sometimes I see, especially here in the startup space, actually I see a lot of speed in India. People are able to move quickly and react quickly. And in my opinion, that is also something uh, we should learn in Finland, kind of how to be as an ecosystem, even slightly more agile. And I think from Indian side, both of you understand also that part of thing, but I also understand the slowness you might be referring to, and that is that is there. Um, a few questions. Uh, first of all, Jana, feel free to comment kind of from, from Indian side. You, I, I don't know much about your background, kind of how much involved in India have you been in the past, but um, India is pretty much present in Finland. As I mentioned, we are a small country. We have 5.5 million people living living in Finland in total, but we have plus 12,000 Indians already already uh, in in Finland. Many of them are part of our academia and in professional professional life. We have plenty of researchers, students, and and for example, professionals from the IT, IT field. So uh, Jana, what, what are kind of your reflections and maybe also kind of your past experience with, with Indian teams in Finland? What has been their strength when they have been our funding customers and also kind of international collaboration between a huge market and a small market with kind of a sometimes opposite strengths? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Um, my, my contact points with India uh, has been with with not not very much. I ha I've never been to India. Uh, for, <laughs> that's one one thing. But but there are, there there have been teams teams in this research to business uh, funding, which uh, some can be can, have been totally Indian people, maybe three, four people, and then of course there have been teams where one or two people are from India, and in those uh, it depends, of course, uh, on the technology or or the 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 industry what they are aiming to. But but in I I can remember a couple of teams uh, who have had at least one Indian researcher in the team so they are heading also somehow to india markets or they are they are or they have some um, partnerships out uh, they are planning some partners for, from indian side so they they have been uh, many connections to to india and they uh, they it's part of their business at least what they are planning um, but otherwise uh, we have been also in business plan trying to um, show or make it visible what kind of accelerators there are in India if there are uh, startups, not only uh, research-based startups, but startups uh, anyway who wants to um, know the markets or do business in India or in the area. Uh, so they, they could 
um, find out some some accelerator who can help them in that that area because our our hands are not uh, not so well um, equipped with with Indian knowledge and and so an accelerator could help them more and we try to um, advise them to, to to contact some some accelerators that's that's how how I how I I've seen this this market uh, as 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 a uh, kind of partnerships or so, but we don't have, um, we have, haven't have any contact on accelerators. We just try to make them visible so the the startups can kind of uh, try to find out what which one is um, the best one for them. So they make the contacts by themselves. So that kind of, oh, well, yeah, I have one Indian friend also, oh, which is, which has, which has been a colleague to my husband in, in his work. So that's my connection to India. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jana. Uh, we don't have much time, but Narayanan uh, Pakvatula, Prof. Pakvatula, do you have some uh, additional remarks you would raise and pinpoint here before I hand over to Dr. Tilronen to kind of conclude this session and say his final remarks? So kind of open open states and kind of final final thoughts to this discussion. Well, the focus of this conversation is tech, but then given the fact that you have an official role, I think there could be another connection to India from Finland, which is uh, uh, which has been absolutely undersold in India is the cultural entrepreneurship. And I see with Alto universities and with the kind of emphasis uh, uh, um, uh, Finland has on design and aesthetics and um, uh, interplay with that, uh, with technology. I think there could be a huge connect on the non-technology part on the aesthetic side and the cultural industry. And that entrepreneurship there is like absolutely minimal in India. And uh, I see Finland's taking quite a bit of uh, a leap there because of the kind of uh, focus you'll have on design and interfacing with technology. I think if that could also be a potential source of uh, 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 collaboration, I think that would be good. I know this is not technology, we're talking about technology, but I still do think that the creative industry partnerships should happen as well. I, that's a very beautiful point. Uh, I see Professor Narayanan wants to, wants to add on to that. That's excellent point in Finland, design is strongly present in everything what we do and also in the technology domain. For example, the auto industry you've been pointing this kind of combination of uh, technology school as well as design school. So yes. wonderful example. And I'm sure also Dr. Tirone has a lot to comment, but Narayanan kind of you, because you come from the tech background and from IIT Madras. So please give your short comments about this topic. I just wanted to very, uh, you know, briefly compliment of Suresh's uh, um, uh, words here. So. This uh, complementarity, interdisciplinarity, and intersectoral approaches, these are the need of the hour. So basically, you know, as you also mentioned, even deep techs and you know, technology institutes like IIT, they require the handholding from uh, premier uh, business institutes like IAM, because you know, at some point, this transition is exactly where this complementarity needs to be struck. And this is uh, uh, what is exactly lacking. And when I see, complementarity, such complementarity approaches between both ecosystems. For example, here at the IIT Madras by Incubator, we run early translational accelerator, which is supported by the Department of Biotechnology Government of India. And we try to scout technologies. We try to bring in the best academic leads and then provide them a platform to scale them up and then move towards technology transfer and commercialization. And also on the Finnish side, I, I start seeing, you know, um, moves like this FIMPOD which is going to bring uh, all together the pharmaceutical, the research, the medical, and all the business sectors that, that comes as a utilitarian product at the end. So all these uh, showcase the fact that we are all moving towards this translational uh, forte per se, and this is exactly what the startups might be looking for. And such launch platforms are extremely important. And also, as mentioned in the previous session, um, I think by Puneet, if I'm not wrong, so uh, Finnish system is also wonderfully set uh, to, to, to you know, 
to protect the startups that face a hard fall. And this is something that is lacking currently in the Indian ecosystem. So there are a lot of points which we look upon, the Scandinavian or the Finnish ecosystems to learn from so that you know we could provide the security aspects, thereby encouraging more startups and entrepreneurs to move ahead without much hesitation. I think these are some small bottlenecks we need to overcome, but then time is, uh, as Professor Suresh nicely mentioned, time is not um, far ahead. So it's, it's already here and then it's the right time now. So with this, I uh, hand over uh, to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Narayanan. Very, very interesting. Now, Mika, please, kind of, I will ask you to conclude this session. And we have heard a lot of interesting insights from the from the Indian side as well as from Jana. So, kind of, please share your thoughts on on for 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 this topic and um, the topics what our panelists raised, and also in general commercializing research. I think that's a fairly interesting topic we need to touch upon more in detail later, but um, your quick reactions, thoughts, and please also give your final remarks. Thank you, Santari. Uh, lovely discussion. I don't see, by the way, my own face, but that is only good. But, but we, uh, we I, see I it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see it. Okay, it has been very inspiring, and I think that I have to meet these uh, these uh, people uh, after after this uh, session uh, certainly i would love to visit you and and have more discussion on this i would love to pick up this what suresh said about this uh, culture of entrepreneurship in finland and uh, that that's exactly the thing uh, i was I know best my own domain, the molecular science and biomedicine, and I noticed in mid-90s that there was a very strong attitude among professors and universities to give support to this. And we had cultivators and incubators where support was given and kind of boom in, in patenting at the end of 90s. And, uh, but, but biomedicine is, of course, a very challenging uh, area where you need a lot of... Uh, uh, funding, investment, and people, and those things are the things that we are lacking, actually. Like said many times here, Finland is a small country, so we need, first of all, we need people from India and other countries, uh, experts uh, and, and skillful uh, talents, and then we need investments and funding, and, and this is certainly a thing that we need, need to think together. I also like very much this idea of Europe and, and also Finland as kind of test bed for US markets, so that the place where you can do things before you scale them up. So you can, in a very reliable environment, very well regulated and protected, uh, and in protection meaning here, the IPR protection and, and, and so on, very well structured uh, uh, environment to, to set up things and then test it like a, like an experiment animal and then take it to bigger market and the market can be by the way also india indian market which is growing very fast so kind of ping pong so why not going to finland to develop something and then coming back to india and make it a, a huge huge hugely bigger market and, and business so these are very uh, kind of preliminary ideas that, that, I, that I, I i i got it to my mind i also like a lot this time is slow time is different gravity is different this is exactly how i also feel and this is also fascinating i, I really love to see this difference and learn from it so we can also it's a two-way process we can learn a lot uh, in the indian way uh, certainly and vice versa so uh, with these words i would love to conclude this i i really love this discussion this was just touching the peak of the iceberg there are a lot of things that we could have discussed more and and but i hope that we can meet later and keep in touch thank you very much thank gentlemen and, and thank you jana and thank you sandari for this session Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So let's conclude this and continue this offline also with our wonderful audience who we who we have had with us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm still on stage and um, I was supposed to continue for a couple of minutes about the other point uh, of view, what we wanted to share with you, kind of to give you a comprehensive overview of what we are doing as Finland in order to help international talent to get connect connected with our ecosystem. So let me let me ask you a question. Um, have you ever thought uh, of working, studying or setting up a company abroad? I think somebody of you for sure have, have given a thought to that. 
And if not, and if it's not relevant for you, uh, I'm sure you at least know some. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly step in here. Looks like we've lost Santeri. Arzu, can we have you up here in a minute, walking us through the Slack community that we wanted to launch exclusively for this community. If you can take a couple of minutes and tell us what's in store, how can all of us continue to stay in touch beyond just today's uh, event? You can take over and then Santeri can continue right after that. Yes, hi Gautam, uh, and yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys had a, a great uh, couple of hours uh, listening to the speakers from uh, uh, both India and Finland uh, over the different sessions that we had today. And um, uh, watch out for more such sessions uh, as we enter in the coming months. Um, I'm Arzu Jain from Head Start Network Foundation. I oversee the international ecosystems here, and I'm overjoyed uh, to be launching the Slack community of India Finland Startup Hub here. Uh, which is a very important part of the hub as you know it uh, bridges the startup ecosystem of uh, india and finland um, and you know may make uh, cross border collaboration smoother uh, with structured engagement so uh, without further ado i will uh, uh, dive straight into uh, my presentation so uh, let me get straight to the why, what, and how of uh, the Slack community that we are launching today. Uh, before I uh, give you guys a brief about what this community is going to be about, uh, let me tell you why are we launching this? I mean, why do we need a, a community? Uh, uh, the idea is uh, simple and uh, the need of the hour, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, to strengthen India and uh, Finnish startup ecosystem through three pillars uh, uh, that we believe is the most essential uh, in a community, uh, a learning, uh, which uh, I mean, I'm sure, like uh, you know, we have uh, people from uh, and known startup e ecosystem enablers and founders from uh, India and Finland in our community. So it's um, it the learning is going to be immense. Uh, the second part uh, of our uh, uh, Slack community. Uh, the second focus would be networking. I mean, uh, of course, like uh, in a community, that's uh, the most integral part, and uh, that's what our focus will be uh, also. And the uh, you know, uh, the most uh, important uh, part of uh, a community is fun. I mean, why would you want to join a community which is not fun? So we uh, we are looking to you know learn and network uh, while uh, having fun. So that's. Uh, uh, the why part of why we are launching this um, uh, Slack community. Uh, but, and now let me uh, give a brief about uh, what this community is. Uh, I mean, I've been talking about uh, the community for the past uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, it is a closed, uh, well-curated community of founders and startup ecosystem enablers from India and Finland with structured engagement throughout. Uh, we have uh, members from uh, Business Finland, Head Start Network Foundation, uh, Invest India, um, Slush, um, Kios, um, and uh, red bricks and a, a lot of uh, you know incubators uh, from India as well. Uh, and we are looking out for more founders to join us in the community uh, so that our, uh, uh, the exchange of learnings uh, 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 would be uh, would just increase with time. And um, and uh, uh, we hope to make an impact a, a, a contribution through uh, this Slack community. Uh, so that's uh, what this community is going to be all about. Now uh, the most important part of my presentation how do you get access uh, to this community yeah so there are two ways of getting access uh, um, to this community uh, one would be uh, getting an exclusive invite from business finland and uh, head start uh, 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 to uh, you know we'll be uh, inviting individuals and organizations who can add value and contribute to the growth of the community and the other uh, part would be uh, actively engaging and adding value to our uh, linkedin community which i'm sure all of you guys are a part of by now if not i'll be adding 
adding uh, the link in the chat. Please join us uh, in the LinkedIn community and engage, uh, ask your queries, um, uh, and we will look forward to um, uh, get them uh, answered. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the ones who will be actively engaging and contributing to it with the extending uh, and invite for the curated, well curated uh, Slack community of India Finland Startup Hub. So that's uh, more or less uh, about Slack uh, community. And we'll be speaking more about this in our, our upcoming sessions. Uh, so I hope to guys, uh, I, I, I hope to see you guys there. Um, um, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, over to you, Gautam. If you have any other points, please do add in here. You know, th thank you so much, Arzu. I think, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about this close community where we can stay in touch with fellow entrepreneurs and enablers incubators accelerators government you know everyone in one place where we can keep you know interacting on a daily basis i think this is what we really need uh, so uh, you know i would love to invite uh, puneet anamari and santeri on on screen if you can quickly share your closing comments uh, you know along with anurag as well if the four of you can come on screen and quickly share your closing comments uh, you know 10 15 seconds each of you it will be great to end, end the session today. I have personally enjoyed the last two, two and a half hours. It's been wonderful listening to all the speakers, uh, you know, and, and also interacting with a lot of you who've been posting questions on, on the chat. So uh, all, all those who have not joined the LinkedIn group yet, please go ahead and join the India Finland Startup Hub LinkedIn group, you know, and, and the others who are already on it, you know, please engage as much as possible on the group. We will keep inviting all those who are actively engaging on the LinkedIn group. We will invite you into the Slack community as well. So, uh, Puneet, Anamari, and Santeri, and Anurag, any quick closing comments from each of you? 10, 10, 20 seconds each. All right. I think Santeri, we cannot see, talk. yeah, we cannot hear Puneet. So maybe, maybe I step over. There's been some technical problems from both of our side for the past five minutes but the whole session two hours we have had have been absolutely fantastic so thank you a lot everybody i got a bit interrupted i shared in the chat what we are also doing at business finland so we are offering and promoting chances to get connected with our universities and companies in order to find overseas education opportunities as well as job opportunities in Finland. So please take a look of the new Futures Made in Finland campaign we have just launched. I just want to thank you everybody and uh, the Slack community we just published and kind of officially now opened is going to be fantastic. So let's continue interacting there generating ideas, making new connections. And it's kind of a way to understand differences between those these two countries a little bit better and most importantly, kind of underlying opportunities. So thank you. Thank you a lot, everyone. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Santiri. Thank you so much, all of you. Have a good, have a good day. And uh, we'll see you soon on the next event as a part of the India Finland Startup Hub. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.